Happy Tuesday. Yeah, we made it. We, uh, you know, a little bit late by by an entire minute. We can't sing, you know, uh, we can't sing Usher because it's no longer seven o'clock on the dot. It is 701 on the dot. And that doesn't really work well with being in your drop top, cruising the streets. But what's up, Sully? Congratulations on being first. Uh, Penguin Airlines, you know, Sully's out here. He's trying you. He's, he's trying to take your spot. But, but Sully, you got a lot of days to be first before you could take over. Uh, Penguin Airlines spot, but what's up, baby of codes? It is good to see you. Oh, see Mossy, welcome. Lilar, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. What's up, second billing cycle? How are you doing, Brandon JC? Welcome, AI Luna. Good to have you. Um, OC Mossy, we are going to be doing both Go and Python tonight. We'll be learning about air handling in both of those things, and we'll do a little, a couple of coding challenges and things as well. Um, let's see. Thug Muffin, congratulations, 5900X. Man, that congratulations. I, it, I'm i in this weird state right now where I get, have my two desktops. One of my desktops has a 50, has a 3950X and the other one has a 5800X. And it really bothers me that it has a 5800X in it. I really want to find 5900X or up, but I, I don't need it at all. But congratulations, I missed mine. I don't know why I got rid of it. That was stupid, a big mistake. Rockville Micro Center. Well, I might have to take a drive tomorrow morning. No, nah, I'm not gonna do that. But maybe, you know, you never know what you're gonna do. What's up, girl with the box? Welcome to the channel. It's good to have you crystallized code. Good to see you tonight. I was told you're also Jamaican. Uh, yes, I am. I'm, I'm a quarter Jamaican. Uh, I don't really, I don't, I honestly don't know much about, oh, well, I know my, I know a lot of my Jamaican family and stuff, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a black guy. I'm a, I'm a black American. I, you know, I, I don't know much. I don't know much about it. I've been a few times. I have family still there. All of my, you know, my aunts and stuff on, on my mom's side of the family, you know, the strong, thick accents. They've told us how to pronounce our names correctly. You know, apparently we over here in America are saying our names wrong. So, you know, it's a, it's, you know, that's, you know. but I claim it. My favorite movie, my favorite movie is in fact, Cool Runnings. I can almost go through the movie word for word. Almost, I'm very close to being able to go through a word for word. One day, maybe we'll do a watch party and I'll have to perform for you all, you know? I gotta show you. Adam, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Nine months, I appreciate that. Good to see you. H Jenny, good to see you as well. Good evening, Nitro Sage, what is up? Thanks for covering that for me. It was my 27th birthday. Other day, dope. First off, congrats, I mean, happy birthday. Not congratulations, but actually congratulations. We had a wild 2020. So both congratulations and a happy 27th birthday. Got yourself a new Razer keyboard. I like it. Mouse and headset, you did the whole package. I love it. Can't wait to put it to use tonight. Amazing. Which uh, which Razer keyboard did you get? I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually a, a becoming a pretty big fan of Razer's products for sure. Never seen Cool Runnings? You have to see Cool Runnings. It is, uh, it is a... You know, it's a phenomenal story uh, of, of triumph, of overcoming obstacles, uh, and and of of believing in oneself. You know, it's a, it's a harrowing story of the Jamaican bobsled team. So definitely check it out. It's it's uh, it really is my favorite movie. I hate synapse. Yeah, I mean, software is a you know, software is. I might feel differently about that. All right, so tonight we are learning all about. Uh, Handling errors. We're gonna learn about error handling, handling errors. We're gonna dive into what that actually means. Uh, and we'll talk about it a lot. We'll go through a few examples and stuff. The, the interesting, the thing about error handling is it is, it's one of those things that is hard to make complete sense of and like until you can conceptualize it, until you can do it in some problems, like to understand how to use it well. But uh, the concept of error handling isn't, I don't think too difficult. Uh, so we'll go through that. And then once we're through that, we'll hop into some coding challenges if we have any time left and we'll get through that on Thursday. We'll actually, you know, we've been doing some coding challenges. We've been approaching them and just solving some of the simpler coding challenges on Thursday. We're going to actually take some time to talk about how you really should be approaching algorithmic problems and algorithmic problem solving and really problem solving as a whole. We'll break it down. I'll give you some uh, tangible things you can take away from it and actually put into practice. Uh, and then we'll, we'll use those tools to actually solve some a little bit more difficult challenges on Thursday. So that's what you got to look forward to this week. Absolutely feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme, get on up. It's bobsled time, you know, cool runnings. I love it. Get a kinesis. I, I'm not getting a kinesis. I'm a terrible typist. And again, you know, I already have, let me see here. You know, my whole build, 
a second. I knocked over everything here. The whole build is back here for my next keyboard, but I'm still waiting on my keycaps. Definitely still waiting on my keycaps, unfortunately. But you know that I'll, I'll finally have two of the same keyboards for the first time in years, which will be super helpful for me. And uh, people ask me what mouse, people have asked me a bunch of times what mouse I use. I use two different mice. I use this one, which is the uh, Logitech MX Master 3, a really good productivity mouse. But for my gaming mouse, I use a glorious PC gaming race. Uh, Model D actually is the one that I use. I like it a lot. I highly recommend it. It's affordable for uh, those super ultra lightweight gaming mice with all the little holes in them. I find it to be very, very comfortable. I have the Model O as well, but my hands are a little bit large, so the Model D works better for me. Uh, Rose Gold, what is Hack Baltimore? Great question. To start off the stream, I actually do want to bring start bringing a little bit more. Um, I want to start bringing this to light a little bit more. Hack Baltimore is dope. Uh, they're still this. They're still going through some cool things, but Hack Baltimore is not, it's an organization, but it's also an event. It was supposed to be a citywide, a pretty large citywide, like week long event and hackathon where people got together to really solve Baltimore City's, uh, you know, problems that they could solve via tech. It's turned into a much larger thing. So I'll have more information for you, uh, but it's pretty big. It will help us. It'll, it will help you. There will be opportunities to um, work with the things that they're doing to help get you all again. We're trying to work on scaling experience to get you all experience, to give you the opportunity to be able to participate in different projects and things uh, and possibly get paid uh, for these things as well. So I will definitely hold on. I got I got all these alerts real quick. All right, the stream's doing fine. What is all this stuff? Uh, but I'll definitely have more information about that. Um, they're building some, they're, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's a really cool thing. There's a lot of people involved in it and I will definitely share. I'll probably have someone from Hack Baltimore hop on here with me. Oh, actually you all can't see what I'm sharing. So, you know, Amame, how are you doing a good night? I mean, you know, I, I don't know if that means you're out, but, uh, you know, have a, have a great night, but it's good to see you. Welcome. So let me see, hold on. Let me just move all this stuff and then we can get started. Um, what is this? Okay, cool. I think we're all right. I think we're okay. Anyone doing anything with the leaks XP source code? I'm not. You should be off of, um, I think that you should be off of XP by now. I hope you're off of XP. You know, I understand if you're not, but you should be off of XP. Do you, do your best. There's Windows 10 is not terrible. It really isn't terrible. All right, so let's get on it now. Let's open this up and let's hit up the classroom. What are we doing tonight? We're in decoded tonight. Yeah, tonight's Tuesday. I get my days mixed up. I always have so much going on. Um, and I didn't even, I'm sorry about that. I didn't drop a uh, day. 11 let's throw this in here material and the drive we are going to take the airs slide right here and slides you can have access to it if you need it day 11 i'll post it for you then we will grab it what materials or resources does one need to learn linux that is a great question so that there are a couple different ways you can go about learning Linux. The, the, the easiest way, the easiest way to go about learning Linux is you don't actually need to ever have installed Linux. So you can go, you can one grab a cheap server or something off of again, Linode, Amazon, digital ocean, or something. You can pay $5, uh, monthly to gain access to a Linux server that you can log into and that you can go through and have a good time with this type of, I, so I don't recommend this when you're first trying to learn Linux. The reason why I don't recommend it is because not having a, if you're not used to dealing with a graphical user, a, a, a graphical, I mean, if you're only used to dealing with things through a GUI, a graphical user interface, this will be a daunting process. And although it's the simplest way to get into it, uh, it might be the hardest to accentuate and to assist in your learning. Yes, the virtual box method is the one that I would choose. The problem here is there's a number of factors that play into having to do that. 
um, you know, the, the, how powerful your computer is and some people, you know, uh, enabling virtualization in your BIOS, a bunch of extra stuff that you also have to learn that can make it a daunting process where, where you haven't even got into the Linux portion of it yet. And uh, then not to mention you have to install Linux once you do have that set up. But that is probably the better, that, that's probably the way that I would recommend. There's tons of tutorials out there. So you need VirtualBox. VirtualBox is free open source software available on all platforms. And uh, you can use that and you can download a Linux ISO. I recommend Ubuntu um, or Pop OS to start with, and you can download it and install it. There's tons of videos for this that you can follow. Uh, there's a, I don't think, Waddle might be up. If you go to my YouTube, there might be a whole Waddle. Uh, there's a Waddle, which is a six part Linux course. You should, I think installation is covered there. You can try that out. Um, it's pretty helpful. You don't need a ton of stuff though. You really just need a computer that you can install VirtualBox on, um, or you need to simply purchase a, you know, rent a server from one of the many providers that are out there and find some type of tutorial to go through. Um, I do recommend, so my ultimate recommendation for learning Linux is to find, well, depends on how bad you wanna learn it. <laughs> if you like, hey, I need to make sure I learn this thing, uh, I say take care, if you have a Windows laptop, save all your stuff, save all the important stuff. And I say wipe windows and install Linux on there so that you have to figure it out. You have to learn, you have to figure it out. It was super helpful. It was like, I know people was like, oh no, don't do that. I mean, don't do it if you need your computer to survive and you need it for school or something like that. Don't do that. You can dual boot, but again, dual booting, I agree. You can dual boot, but dual boot booting, all of these things represent so many different topics that you have to learn. Uh, besides Linux. This is why my first recommendation was to simply grab a server from one of the providers that are out there because then you don't have to worry about the process of installing Linux. And I do think nowadays it is less important for you to understand how to install Linux. I know some people are purist and you know, oh, like you think that's a big deal. I, I disagree that that is a super important thing to know nowadays uh, because it's just, it's it's not a part of the process. It's like, like for most people, it's just not a part of the process. So, um, yeah. Or yeah, if you're on Windows, Windows Subsystem for Linux, that's what I use. I would absolutely recommend doing that. All right. So tonight we are going to talk all about errors and error handling. Again, a pretty, a pretty simple concept. Uh, conceptually, you, I think we all know what errors are. I think we all are used to running into errors. Errors are the most frustrating part of learning how to code. I think. But this is how you, when you are creating a program, can, can do these things and to work around errors that are introduced uh, during different pieces of the, uh, the, the life cycle of the application. What's up, the emo dad? It is good to see you, TJ Goose. Welcome, Centipede Kid. It's good to have you here as well. Welcome to the channel. So let's do it. Errors, you made a mistake. Hold on, one second. All right, my bad. It's just very warm in this room. Thank you. Just had to, you know, see if my water bottle was out there because it's very warm. All right, my bad. So errors, you made a mistake. Let's learn about them. We're going to hop right into types of errors. I don't even think we need to, to dive into what an error is. I think we all know that an error is an, an issue that has occurred in either the logic or, or, or whatever is being interacted with in the code, there is a, there's a problem. Okay. That's all an error is, but there are different types of errors. And it's more important that we dive into each type than diving into errors as a whole. So the first type of error that we're going to talk about is a syntax error and syntax errors are when you do not follow the rules or structure of a language. And we're going to hop right into code and we're going to try to knock, uh, we're going to try to introduce ourselves to one of these right now. So syntax. 
you know, you've probably heard the term syntax when you're talking about language, uh, spoken language or written language. Syntax is, is, is the, the form and the function of the way that, that the language is set up. You know, are you following the paradigms? Do you have the keywords in the right places? Do you have colons and parentheses in the right places? Is your indentation correct? Things like that. This is the first type of error that you might run into. And let's take a look. I think it's important for you to be able to see these errors and for you to be able to identify these errors when you are coding to help you understand and what's going on because errors are very helpful. Uh, they're, they're, they're so important because they are helpful. They're not there to harm you. They're not there to make you feel bad about yourself. They're there so that you know what to do next. You know what the issue, you know what issues are occurring and you should be thinking about that as you're developing applications. You should be thinking about how you can provide, also provide meaningful errors um, to the user so they can understand. If you ever run into an issue with your code, if you ever run into a problem and you can't, figure it out. That is because a meaningful error was not presented to you. Um, and so, you know, you want to think about that as you're you know, right now, just keep that in mind. So let me log in to our server. Hmm. Root at sandbox. All right. Password? No, no. Okay. There we go. All right. So I'm in my server now and let's get going here. Let's, uh, is there a decoded? I feel like there's got to be a, I feel like we work out of this one all the time. Maybe we work out of a different one. All right, cool. Whatever. We'll 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 just make one here. Go decoded. Whoops. Whoa. Never mind. All right, so now we're here. Okay, so let's talk about syntax errors. Let's again, do it with Go and Python. So I'm gonna make a directory for Go. I don't know why I didn't just didn't add that in one command. One for Go, one for Python. Let's go ahead and let's do this thing. So in the Go directory, I am going to go ahead and add a file and we'll call this uh, syntax error. We'll just call this syntax yeah, error.go. And let's see what a syntax error looks like in Go. These are very easy to run into, extremely easy to run into. So what's very interesting is that we're gonna talk about all, a lot of these different types, uh, these different error types that you need to be aware of. This, this is the kind of thing that we, very early on when we talked about the differences between compiled languages and statically typed languages, we talked about why they were important and uh, what, what, what properties they both had. And one of the things that we said is that we would find out about errors in our code for compiled languages. We would find out about errors in our code uh, at compile time rather than runtime. So uh, when you were getting the, when we're compiling the code to get ready to run uh, rather than when it's actually running. And that's super helpful for us. And that's one, that's one of, one of the biggest benefits to me of a compiled language. And we will start to see these things as we go to compile this code. It's gonna be a lot harder for us to, to, to get through it because it's gonna be popping up errors left and right uh, as we make them. So. Let's go ahead and set this up. I don't really need a thumped package here and let's add our main function. And again, we're just doing this every single time because uh, we wanna add in some muscle memory to what we're doing. And all we're gonna do here is simply say, uh, let's do, let's do something. We'll leave that there. Let's do a format dot print line. And we'll do a hello world. And then maybe we'll leave off, we'll leave off an ending, that ending um, uh, quotation here, or maybe we'll do, actually let's do this. Let's do an, let's do an if, uh, actually no, we can leave it just like this. And we will try to save this and we'll try to run it. We automatically get some errors we, immediately, right out of the box. You can see at the bottom, uh, this is just the way that I have Vim set up. It gives us some errors before we have anything, before we 
even save it, but I'm gonna save it anyway and uh, go to compile it and run it. And so that you can see these errors uh, another way. And if I try to go run this, If I try to run it, the very first thing that happens when you do a go run, remember, go run first compiles the code because it's a compiled language, and then it tries to run that code. During the compilation phase, we get this syntax error right here. Look at it. Well, well this is the name of the file. Uh, but look at the type of error. So another difficult thing about errors is that you're simply going to have to learn, like it's gonna take you time to see these things and learn how to read errors. Learning how to read errors is a very important thing that you need to do. And so we're gonna go through that. Uh, Corzy, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, welcome everybody from Corzy's channel. Come on in, get comfortable, get ready to learn a little bit about errors. How was your stream today, Corzy? Uh, definitely, you know, give you a shout out for, for the raid. I appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, RZI, there we go. First try. We got it. Maybe we did. Yeah, there we go. I hope you had a good stream today. You know, definitely let me know. But welcome. It's good to have you all here. Hopefully you're not watching ads because we here at Mastermind Academy, we we don't like outside advertisements. And, uh, you know, we, we really try to create a war on advertisements. So I'm sorry that you had to watch them. I have no control over this. Maybe I do. Maybe I do now. I don't know. Maybe I have more powers uh, now. But, you know, welcome to the channel. It's good to have you. There's some C-sharp and some .NET Core and then plays, oh, first off, Slay the Spire, phenomenal game. I love that game. I used to, when it first came out, I played it all the time. I I also imagine that Slay the Spire is gonna be a game, I'm about to have a kid, and when you don't have a lot of time and like, I can't be at the computer and stuff, I I have to imagine that's gonna be the type of game that I, I pick up pick back up, uh, that I can play like on my tablet or something while, you know, I got, I'm got i on baby duty and stuff. Slay the Spire is phenomenal. If anyone doesn't know what Slay the Spire is, uh, it's it's a it's a roguelike uh, card-based tactical game. It's pretty cool. I really do have a good time with it. Um, let's see, can you show the code while typing? What do you mean, can I show the code while typing? Oh, the actual code, oh yeah, uh, the, the actual code that we were writing, absolutely. This is the code right here. And again, notice it is missing. It's missing a an ending uh, parenthesis. It's missing a closing parenthesis. And that's why we get that syntax error. And so I can actually go, um, how do you do, let's do this. I remember you all taught me this. Let's actually open this up over here. Let's log in again. Come on, maybe I, I, I guess I typed it wrong that time. There we go. All right, let's make this a little bit larger. And if I go run, if I go run it again, I want you to be able to see the error. And again, it tells us exactly where it is. So remember, you need to be able to see the error. You need to be able to break it down a little bit and understand it. And so it tells us right here. and. The, the stack trace is going to be different. The error is going to be presented to you different in different coding languages. So it's going to take some time to understand it. Like when I get JavaScript errors, because I don't deal with JavaScript that often anymore, I, I have a lot of trouble uh, understanding what's happening in a JavaScript uh, stack trace and JavaScript errors that are given back to me, um, or a little bit more trouble than any than other languages that I'm more used to. So it tells us right here, this file, syntax error.go on line six, Character 27. So it tells us it tells us exactly which line there's an issue with. And it tells us exactly which character. And it tells us this is the type of error that we received, a syntax error. Uh, we have not followed the rules of the language, okay? We are missing uh, part, we're missing, we're having an error in the structure. Uh, so it has nothing to do with our logic, has nothing to do with any of that. We are missing a, a piece that it needs. Unexpected new line, it was expecting a comma or a closing parentheses. It tells us there, right there in the error. So you do want to not run past those and try to make guesses. What I want you to do as you're learning how to code now, as you're going through these coding challenges, as you're trying different things, as you receive errors, I, I really want you to, to really take a look at them and begin to break them down in your mind and see if you can really understand what's happening because the sooner you can do that, the more effective you'll, you'll, you'll be able to solve problems. And these errors, 
are tools to solve problems. I, I, use, I utilize these errors to figure out what's going on. I know that these errors can point me in the right direction and they can be super duper helpful. So this is a syntax error here. And so now it tells me on line six, I can check it out. You know, character 27, I can go here and I can just put in the ending piece right here. And when we run this, this, this code will now run. So that is a syntax error. We, we have incorrect structure. We have not followed the rules of what we are trying to do. So let's do this in Python. Let's see what it looks like when you get a syntax error in Python and let's see if it looks the same at all. So we'll go back over here and, um, oh, I hate when it does this. Um, Let's get out of here. Actually, let's do that again. And let's create a new one here. And let's call this, again, syntax error. Dot py. Okay, so now we're gonna now we're gonna modify this syntax error.py. And syntax error.py, uh, pretty simple. Let's say we create a function. Let's create a function right here called um called our func. Whatever, just a little function here. And in here, let's say we forget to put in our colon here. Colon is pretty important. Uh, white space is also important, but let's just do this and let's uh, let's act like we did this here and we can just do the same thing. We can do a print hello world function. And you're gonna see how different this looks. And so immediately we get an error, but again, no big deal there. Uh, so I'll leave, I'll actually leave that up. Uh, whoops. Let's open that up so you can see it. Uh, okay. I spelled, I see that I spelled Python wrong. Okay. That make you know, that we, we are going to run. Okay. Perfect. And um, thank you for that. We, we always have spelling errors over here. And so, you know, that's our one for tonight. That's, that's our, our first one for the night happened earlier than we expected. You know, usually we wait a little bit longer before we make spelling errors. Uh, but this is going to be one that persists all evening. I'm not changing it. All right. <laughs> we, we, we did it wrong. We're going to stick with it. We're not going to fix our problems here at all. So we run this code. Oh man, I'm struggling. Python three. Oh man, I'm struggling. And syntax error.py. And we get an actual syntax error. So both of these errors that we saw, the one, both the one with Go and the one with Python, give us this syntax error. And let's take a look at this one. Take a look at it. See it. Yo, it tells you exactly what file it was. Root decoded Pyth Python. Uh, syntax error on line one on the very first line and it ge it tells us right here hey uh, at this character with a little the little carrot right there you are missing something i don't really know what it is but you are missing it syntax error this is the error type that we're talking about right now invalid syntax whenever you see this you are likely missing a colon you are likely missing a comma you are likely missing a parenthesis you likely have uh incorrect indentation you likely have incorrect curly braces this is what a syntax error is. Okay. And to fix it, you simply go here and you do this. And now uh, I don't know why it's causing me so much trouble. Okay. Oh, and there we go. Uh, well, we never, so we didn't get an error this time because why we never actually called that function. So that is, that's why it's, you're not seeing anything. Uh, but we did not get an error that time. It's because we actually didn't uh, do that at all. So cool. Uh, what's up, uh, Gizzy? Welcome to the channel. DZ, welcome. Uh, Rhino, I like it. Welcome to the channel. Uh, tor torquid? Torch? Oh, torched. There we go. You try a couple times, you finally get it. Welcome to the channel, Torch. It's good to have you all here. All right, so those are syntax errors. Make sure... Again, you see syntax error. Think about the rules and the structure. You probably are missing a character, okay? All right, so after that, let's come back to, let's come back to exceptions. Let's go through the other error types um, as we go through and we'll come back to exceptions. I actually don't know why it's in this order. Um, yeah, so let's, let's, let's skip exceptions for now. We'll come back to it. The next, whoa. 
The next one here is type errors, okay? This is raised when a function operation is applied to an object of incorrect type, okay? Type errors. These are the types of errors we're talking about when we talked about these strictly typed languages or statically typed languages. Uh, these are the type, you, you're not going to have type errors um, when you do this, or you're not gonna be able to run the code with type errors. These are things that are gonna be found during compile time. So type errors look a little bit different. So let's take a look at what it looks like when you receive a type error. All right, let's open these back up and it's going to go. Let's add a new one and call it type error. Dot go and open that up over here. And same thing, muscle memory. Let's go ahead and get it all on here. Uh, I just trying to make sure Chad's paying attention. Error is the second greatest typist in the world. Uh, yes, exactly. Second greatest. I don't know who's the first greatest, but I am the second greatest in the in the world, okay? You know, just trying to make you exactly. I'm just trying to make sure you're 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 paying attention. I want to make sure you're catching these things. You know, if you don't catch them, you're obviously not paying attention. And we need to do some things to make it a little more interesting so you are paying attention. You got it, Sully. Thanks for having my back, man. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. I mean, I'm assuming you you're saying you're number one. I'm cool with that. I'll take that. You 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 put me on a pedestal for my typing skills, I'll put you on a pedestal as well. All right, so let's do our funk here. Actually, that's not funk. Let's package main it again. Again, muscle memory. We're just gonna do it over and over again until you know we got it down. Form format here. Funk main. Okay, okay. Uh, you know we're getting it. Ah, uh, almost, almost got it without looking. All right, funk main. Let's do it again. So we're talking about type error here. This is when they're invalid types. So let's do something like this. Let's uh, actually we don't even need to do that. We can just do this right here. We set the ver the variable uh, x. We set a variable called x and we give it a value. Actually, no, let's do a var. Let's do var our number, okay? A variable called our number. Obviously that thing needs to be an integer, right? What happens if I try to go and make this our number equals, well, let's try to make it six. Let's try to make it the string six, all right? And then I try to print that out. So let's format that print line this. Um, our number, let's go ahead and try this right here. So we are declaring this variable, our number, which is gonna be of type int. We are assigning a value of a string and we're trying to try to print that thing out. Let's go ahead and let's save this. I've, oh, okay, cool. Um, didn't give us an error right up front, but let's see what happens here. We didn't try to compile it yet compile it yet so that's you know that's fine so go run type error dot go and now we go ahead and we get our type error here and so it says hey in the type error dot go file on line eight all right on this line right here character number 12 is where the offending case begins or as far as the error can tell this is where it begins you cannot use six type uh type untyped string as in type int in assignment so i'm a trying i'm trying to assign this thing an incorrect uh type so i, I can't if i told you it's gonna be an int i cannot assign it this type of a string so you know if we do that it, it will work um but we can also do something like like this maybe we want to do instead we can we can get type errors again by doing it might, this might give us an argument error, but let's see what happens here. Let's uh, let's make a function really quick called our func. Uh, let's just let's do an add function and pass in you know a four and a five. So same thing, and let's go ahead and set up our add function really quick. Uh, func. Nope, gotta get my gotta get my fingers in the right place. Func add takes in x comma y, both of them integers, returns. We don't need to return anything. Uh, we just need to go ahead and print those out. Actually, we do. Because we're saving it. Turn x plus y, let's close it out. And let's go back up here and 
let's uh i did something wrong oh i didn't i didn't give it a return all right so we save this and now we will run this again and we get another type error because i tried to pass this in Say similar thing uh, i'm not trying to sign a value but i am trying to pass in the string of five i'm trying to pass it in as an integer i said it was supposed to be an integer i tried to pass in a non-integer we get a type error here uh nmi uh, the, the, that walrus operator. So we, we call that the walrus operator, or I call it the walrus operator. Uh, what it does is it, it's a shorthand for both declaring a variable and assigning it a value. So this is a shorthand way of saying this, like, let's say, uh, you know, if we made our number five, okay, that is the exact same thing as if we went var our number integer and our number equals five. This is so this this one line right here is these two lines put together. Okay, so these two lines put together right here are equal to this line right here. You can use either one. Um, it's just a shorthand walrus operator if you want to do that. It, and so it does give you type inferencing. So you can do this. Uh, so Go is one of the few statically typed languages that will try to infer what type you want. And so if you need to be explicit about the type, then you need to do it this way. Uh, but if, you, if you're if you fine with the type inferencing, you can do it this way. That's a, that's a uh, that was good for, for bringing up DeepWare. Yes, the walrus operator in Python does mean something different. And I think, I think the walrus operator in Python was only introduced in Python 3, uh, like 3.8 or something like that, 3.6. Uh, but yeah, they do mean completely different things. So that is a type error different types, you know, we can't do that here. Now, what does this look like? What does this look like when we're trying to do something in in Python, where Python's not statically typed, it's not a statically typed language. How can we get a type error in Python? Let's, let's try out a couple things really quick. So let's see, and we're gonna go Python and we will call this type error. Type error.py over here, we'll open this up. And let's try this here. So maybe we can do something like simply like uh, uh, print. I wonder if I actually have no idea if it's gonna give us this to us. Let's do like 50 divided by the string uh, six. So we wanna do 50 divided by six. And we did this right here. And let's save this. Man, why? I don't know why Python's giving me this weird. That's super odd. I don't know why it's doing that. Every time I save it, for some reason, it's giving me like some odd errors. I could look at those, but it seems like a weird Vim thing. I'll check it out in a second. It might be my setup's not fully complete, but yeah. What's up, Mike? Peace out. Have a good night. Thanks for coming through for a little while. Absolutely. Uh, so type error here. Let's go ahead and run that over here in the Python directory. And <laughs> let's Python 3. And we'll do type error right here. And so this, so we get, we get it. We get the exact same uh, stack trace we got last time. It tells us what file it is, what line it's on. We only have one line here, uh, but it tells us right here, this is a type error. So this is why it's good to understand the different types and what they are, because as soon as you see them, as soon as you walk into them, it, it in your brain, you can already start to figure out what the answer is. And it, it starts to push you towards resolution. All right, one of the biggest things that you can get good at while you're coding, it is, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is what I lean on the most. I, when I have, if I'm serious about it and I have time, the, I'm not a good, I don't think I'm a great engineer, uh, but I am a great problem solver. I, I'm really good at, I'm very good at troubleshooting. I'm really good at troubleshooting. And that is what I pride myself on. And that's why I've been able to be effective uh, using languages that I have no idea about, using tools that I have no idea about. You know, you understand the main concepts. Once you can start to break down the problems, when you have a problem and you can break that down and understand where to take, like how to take the next step, you can almost always find the answer. You can get there eventually. You really can get there eventually. So, uh, you know, I, that, that's why I'm gonna be harping on this so much. Pay attention to what type of error you're receiving and, and, and make sure you understand how you can look at these errors and, and understand what it's trying to portray to you. And so I try to divide the number 50 by the string six. So I just, so think about, think about your data types. 50 is an integer 
I tried to divide it by a string. I did division because multiplication will actually probably work. Um, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, but type error tells you right here, unsupported operand types for the slash, which is division. I tried to do an int and a string doesn't work. Those two things do not work well together because they are of different types. Okay. If we did this in go, it would have gave us the same problem as well. So yeah, so that is a type error. It means that types you're trying to use is you're either trying to, you're trying to do uh, something that's incompatible. You are trying to merge or, or utilize different data types in a way that you can't use them together and it'll point you to where that problem is. All right. Okay, so that that those are type errors. Pretty pretty simple there. What's up, Goki Buki? Welcome to the channel. Good to have you. Thank you so much for the follow. What's up, Heavy D with Style? Thanks for the, the air handle session. Absolutely per perfect to do an SRE job in the future. One hundred percent. That's dope. Uh, you got. I'm telling you, you got it. Keep all you got to do. Keep picking up the stuff. Like e even if. You're not gonna be a pro at all of the topics in one night or in a week. But now, if you've never touched air handling before tonight, at the very least, you'll have seen it done and you'll know how to think about these a little bit better. And you're you're an inch closer. You're always, every little thing you do, you're an inch closer. It's another tool in your tool belt. I love it. Keep going. Let us know where you at along your journey. You know, I, I love it. I definitely, I, I love it. I really do. Absolutely. Absolutely, we are having a great stream. Okay, so now let's do the next error. So what, what kind of errors do we have so far? You know, make sure you don't want to, you don't want to forget them. So far we've done both a syntax error. Syntax is you have an I issue with the structure. You're, you're, you're not following the rules of this language. And then we have type errors. This has to do with data types. And again, this can be raised in a couple of different ways, but you're trying to do a process, uh, which you can't because of incompatible data types. So that's where you got to go there with that. Uh, what's up, TJ welcome to the channel, the flame Lord. Thank you so much for the follow, welcome to the channel. It is good to have you both. The next one is a name error. All right, thrown when an object can't be found. So this is particularly for, well, name error. The, I think Python is gonna throw it as a name error. I actually think that Go is gonna give you something a little bit different. So let's see what these name errors look like. What, what, how do things work when an object doesn't exist? It's trying to do something where the object does not exist. And we'll keep the examples very, very simple. 15 year systems administrator. Hey, heavy D with style. I def I understand. I certainly understand exactly where you're at. I, I wasn't quite that far along, but I, you know, I had only done a lot of systems administration stuff. And then I started interviewing for all the SRE roles and DevOps roles. And I was getting smacked in the face by not knowing, um, I, I just didn't know a lot about automation at all. I knew a lot about the systems. I really did. And I knew how to solve the problems. You you, you can go in there, you can kill the answers to, to solving the problems. Like I, I know the answer to this question, but I don't know how to do it automatically. I don't know what I can write to do. I don't know how to write anything. And I definitely struggled. I definitely struggle with it. So, you know, I understand where you're at. Let me know if you need any help along the way. If you have any specific questions, I'm, I came into all of this from a systems administration background. So, you know, maybe, Maybe you have something specific, maybe I can help out with, let me know. All right, so let's do a, uh, let's do a, a problem where we run into a name error. So let's go back into Go, to the Go folder. Uh, nope, let's, uh, whoops, Go. And what do we call this name? Error.go. And open up name error.go. And here we go. So same thing, package, main, import. You don't need this import, but again, we're always, we're always gonna use the fump package, not GMT, but we're always gonna use the fump package. Uh, Lipples. thank you so much for the love. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Thank you so much for waging war against the advertisements here. Congratulations to everyone who did receive a gifted sub. Please thank your gifter. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for supporting uh, and the, the the spreading of information here. I appreciate that. Again, we use I use 
all I used all the funds here to set up events to do all kinds of stuff to make sure that we can make this bigger and better so that people can get this information so that we can all get, you know, we, we can all change the world. We get the skills to change the world. And then one day, we'll, you know, we'll all just, we'll, we'll make some cool stuff happen so that we can all live a good life. That's the goal. I appreciate that. It really does go a long way. So thank you so much for that. All right, so let's do our funk main. And our name error. We can, we can we can cause this problem very simply by trying to format dot print line. You know, what if we try to what if we just try to print out uh, the variable X? All right, let's just let's just try to do that right here. And so we go run. So what do we call this name error dot go and we get an undefined error here um, instead of a name error. Uh, when I originally created this, this was for Python, the Python course. Uh, so Python will give us a name error for something like this. Uh, this type of error, it's still, you know, these undefined errors, they're still name errors as well. Um, but I wanted, just to, I wanted to just show you the difference here, but it says undefined X. Uh, un, whenever you see this undefined, you'll see undefined very, very often. This is one of two problems, okay? This is one of two problems, e either, you did not ever declare a variable. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead right here and I'm actually gonna declare it now. And you know, let's just do, uh, let's do an int so we actually get, let's make it a Boolean. So we actually get a return value, something that we can see and this will work. Okay, this will run, we will get false. Everything has a zero value. We should talk about that. We should talk about that in a second. Uh, I don't think I ever taught you all about the zero values of things. But um, when you get undefined, when you get name errors in different languages handle this different ways, this usually covers the gamut of what it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be an undefined error or a name error. And it's basically, hey, you're trying to utilize this name. You're trying to utilize this thing, uh, but it has not been defined, okay? So you're trying to utilize a name, but it, it hasn't been created yet. And so um, you gotta make sure that you're missing something. So the two, the two problems you're gonna run into is either it's not created. The second problem you're gonna run into is it's not in scope. So it might not be that it's not created, but it might be that it's not in scope. Remember how we can, uh, you know, using Go, we can create scope a couple different ways through functions. Uh, we can also just create a new scope by doing this, by adding in these, uh, adding in some parentheses, uh, not parentheses, some, some curly braces to create a new scope. And so this will also give us the same error or it should give us the same error. And we get this here in this file on this line undefined X. Yeah, we defined X. X is here. We set up space for X, uh, but it is not in the current scope of things. So those are going to be the two things you got to look into. Did I create the thing? And when I'm, when I'm attempting to access this code, when I'm attempting to access the name the variable that is given, uh, is it, is it within scope? So it tells you, look at where it says the error is. It doesn't say the error is on line seven. It says the error is on line 10 right here. Okay. Undefined X. I don't know what that is up here is fine. I can print out X up top, but yeah, sometimes depending on the situation, you have no idea why the variable is undefined when it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's, that's, that is very true. Um, these, I do agree. So scoping scope can be one of the toughest problems to solve. Uh, it can be one of the hardest things to figure out what to change in your code. I, I, it definitely, yeah, it can definitely be one of the most difficult things to figure out, especially because scope again is usually defined by changes in functions, or if you're talking about Python, which we're about to go look at, uh, changes in indentation levels and things like that. It can be tough to figure out where the heck this stuff is going on at. But uh, so scope, or is it defined at all? And this is gonna be your undefined or name error uh, thing. So whenever you see these things, you should go and do that. So that is Python, I mean, let's go. Let's go back to Python and let's go into name error.py and let's go ahead and open this up over here and see what we can do. All right, so over here, um, how are we gonna do this? Same thing, let's simply do it, the exact same thing that we did over there and simply try to print, print out X or not D, just print out X because we're children. All right. I really don't know why it's doing this. Oh, let's actually, so let me actually look at this error because I want this to stop happening. Uh, we're in CSH comma, com oh, command not found, GT, CTA, okay. 
Uh, so just come in, I found a map. Okay, so this has to do with some of the stuff that's inside of my, it has to do with some things that are inside of my ZSHRC, not ZSHRC, inside of my VimRC that I don't have set up here uh, on the server. Okay, that's fine. I just wanna make sure, so I'm not gonna set it up right now, but I was wondering why we were getting that error. So Python 3, name error.py, and here we go. Here in Python, it's called a name error, but this is, you can see the same type of error. X simply is not defined, and they call it a name. Name error is not defined. This variable is not defined, it, it, you know, so whatever the variable may be, um, it's not defined. You, maybe if you're calling the function, you might get this as well. So it's not just variables. It is whatever you are calling upon is not defined. So we could also try to call a, we, we can also try to call like a weird function here. Um, instead, it's, maybe it's not print, maybe um, do all the things, a function that does not exist, okay? Maybe we're trying to call this right here and we will still get a name error here. We are attempting to leverage something that has not been created in the code at all yet, all right? Living on the edges root always, oh, well not always, but most of the time. Yes, I am living on the edge as root. Um, you know, this is my throwaway development server. We are remote developing. Um, I operate out of a Linode VPS um, because I work off of a bunch of different computers. I, I'm working off of two different computers as we speak, and I have two other computers that I work off of, so it's nice to have a centralized point. You know, and if it dies, you know, if I, if I break something, I will just tear it down and submit up a new one. I make it a point to not get too attached to a setup. Um, I'm, I, I can get myself back up and running very, very quickly. I, I might, and so what I might actually do, I've been I've been really holding off on it, but I really might create uh, some Ansible playbooks to do my full dev setup uh, so that I can always recreate it whenever I want uh, much more easily. Um, I also, I'm either gonna do that or set up a Packer build uh, to create an image that I can utilize either one to make it easier. I'll probably do that. <laughs> probably do the Packer build to be honest, but the Packer build is gonna have to be kept up to date a little more often. I don't know, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out what to do there, but yeah, you know, living on the edge, you gotta do what you gotta do. If it dies, Terraform destroy, auto approve, yeah, and then apply, you know, make bring it back up. That'll bring up the infrastructure, but then we gotta get it all set up as well. I wanna get all the things back on it, but 100%. Name errors in Python are done at runtime, so a name can be undefined until Python gets to it. That is second billing cycle. I really like, I. I love that call out. I love that call out. This is really good. Actually, I want to see this pastebin code. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so that's good. What, what second billing cycle is saying there is that because Python is an interpreted language, uh, because it's interpreted, it will not, there's no pre-compilation here. There's no comp compiling of your code. And so the errors that you're gonna run into won't, it won't happen until you are running the code and, if there are 30,000 things that happen before you get to this point, your code will run through effectively until you get to this point and then you will hit a snag. This is this could be very problematic, uh, waiting that long to figure it out, waiting that long to come to a, a part where you get that error. So it will execute all the other code because again, it's going kind of line by line and interpreting what you've input. And uh, because of this, th <laughs> this is another reason why I really do love uh, statically typed languages, compiled languages. Why I like compiled languages is because you get all that stuff up front rather than you pushing this thing out to where people are using it, uh, you generally can get these errors right up front. So yeah. Also switch so stick some dot files uh, and repos you can clone. My dot, yeah, I do have a uh, exclamation point GitHub. I do have my dot files in there. They're not up to date though. Uh, my dot files are not up to date, but I do keep, they're they're almost up to date. They're, they're close enough, but I'm having some issues I need to change the structure because of some of the things I have in my dot files now that I didn't used to have in them. But yeah, yep, I do absolutely use that. All right, so here we go. We have a name error in both of these things. You know, couldn't things that are undefined when it gets there, if it tries to call them, it try to utilize something that uh, is not been defined to the to the system it, during this run you will not have access to it and you will receive a name error or an undefined error. All right, let's go on to the next one. Value error. All right, so throw in a function's argument is of inappropriate type. This one is specifically, this one is, is specifically for Python. 
okay this this i want to throw this one in here because it's specific for python uh this, i think all the rest are specific to python there there are some more specific errors to python that are not listed here wanted to give you a general rundown of uh, kind of the most common errors you're going to run into value error is another one so the same way before we did this with go we did this with go and you got you got your uh, uh it gave you a type error because of the way typing works in that language so it was much easier to uh, to do that but here because this is not statically typed what happens if we try to make a function that declare some arguments um and maybe you pass an incorrect thing to uh to an you pass something weird into a function you can get this error and so we're going to look at this here uh welcome welcome the alt f4 stream it is good to have you come on in uh get get comfortable it's good to see you first off i hope you had a great stream hope you had a great day um we are here just learning a little bit about errors tonight uh you know that we make tons of errors everyone if you're not familiar with the alt f4 stream let's type it in correctly I've, I'm, I'm getting good at typing out so uh, i usually forget it the first time but now i remember it but if you're ever looking to learn how to do anything, so all of you, all everyone who was like, hey, I'm a sys, I'm a sysadmin, I'm looking to get an SRE role, DevOps, whatever, please, right now, go immediately to follow the Alt F4 stream. Uh, he he, deal, he deals with a lot of the same things that you're gonna deal with. Deals with a lot of infrastructure. He's actually building, uh, he's actually building right now a container platform, like a, a container orchestration platform, um, a provisioning, like a, a little, a little like Kubernetes like provisioning platform with Go. It is super helpful to learn because he dives into all of those different things. If you ever, if you really want to see a product being built, if you want to see how uh, you have to deal with all these different things, how they go together, how you can use code to solve these issues, please, please absolutely give him a follow. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome everybody. Come on, get comfortable, sit down. We are just talking about these things. So value error in Python. Um, also, let me give you, let me give you all this as well. The best site for learning Python period is W3 schools not W3 schools, W3 schools. And all these Python types will be listed there as well. If you need something to go off of here, I always go Python, uh, Python W3 schools. That's how I find the page that I want to look. I actually have no idea how to use W3 schools. I don't know what to click on to get here because I Google it like that every single time, but they have, um, so I'm giving you a little, we're about to do this stuff. I'm giving you a little help. Uh, by showing you this try accept, but they do have uh, the the types in here somewhere. At least I thought they did. I thought there was a list of types, but if there's not, we can we can find a list of type of, of error types uh, that we have in Python specifically. Again, every language is going to have a slightly different variation. So these are the ones that I've given you so far are the main types that you are going to get. The, these are these are kind of core types that kind of exist across. All of the languages, uh, each language might have a type or two that is different, a, an error type or, or two that is different. So make sure that when you are diving into a language, when you get to that point where you're dealing with errors, uh, make sure you're hopping in and learning some of those things for sure. Coding in TypeScript? Uh, who's coding in TypeScript? Alt F4 is coding in TypeScript? That's, I mean, I mean, that's that's cool, but I, I'm there for the go. So nah, yeah, I like TypeScript a lot actually because Regular JavaScript is archaic and TypeScript takes something very archaic and makes it a little more comfortable. Just makes it a little more uh, palatable for people who make a lot of mistakes. I am someone who makes tons of mistakes. I like the rules to be there to keep me from destroying things. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's building it in Go. Um, but cool, so let's look at, let's look at this value error. Let's see if we can make this. Oh, you're working on Quirk, okay, all right. So let's see, let's do it. Let's see if we can get a, uh, a, a value error in Python. Um, what's up? Uh, what's it? Ludicolo, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow Klaus. Good to have you. Arthas, good to have you as well. <laughs> Leaky butt, I, uh, phenomenal. I tell you, you guys have such clever names. Now I feel like I need to go back and make my alt account uh, into a better name like Leaky Butt. That's a good one because it's Leak E Butt. Pretty clever. You know, all you did, like really, all you did was change the A and the Y. I like it. It's good to have you here. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, 
I subscribe to that. And this is the reason, I don't know if anyone was on here when they, when I was asked the question about aliens, because we like to laugh at Leaky Butt, that is why uh, Leaky Butt, that, that's, that's why I, that's why there has to be aliens. There has to be, we can't be the only life form because we're laughing at Leaky Butt jokes, okay? So there's gotta be a higher life form out there for sure. That's, that's my reasoning for confirming that there must be aliens. But Darty Blaze, good to have you as well. Smakes, good to have you. Van Fleek, welcome to the channel. Yeah, I, 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 facts. That's the reason. All right, so let's see if we can get a value error real quick. Inappropriate types. Arguments, argument is of an inappropriate type. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I don't even know. Let's try it out. Let me see if I can think of something off the top of my head because, um, because these don't, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's a dynamically typed language. We'll see function. So def, uh, cause we're doing Python and let's say def, let's, uh, call it, uh, val error. And let's go ahead and let's take in, uh, let's take in an X and a Y. All right. And let's try to, um, Let's simply return. Uh, hmm, let's let's return. Let's do it. Let's do like an add again. Let's do x plus y. And let's call our val error down here. All right. My so my my. My Vim folks, my Vim folks who use Nurtree, or maybe this is not Nurtree, maybe this is Commander of Completion. All right, so my Vim folks, when I type in Val error, okay? Two, I have two questions for you. You don't have to answer it right now for me, but I'll keep an eye out for your answer. I'm just letting you know right now if anyone wants to help me out with this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my Vim skills back up. I'm trying to focus back in Vim a little bit. All right, it tells me, it gives me some uh, suggestions here. I would one like to be able to tab complete it. If possible, I would like to be able to hit tab and it give me the, at the very least, give me the first, the first option there. That would be nice. The second, uh, the second thing that I would, the second thing that I would like to do is, uh, is, well, that's the thing I would like to do. If I can't do that, how, what is the shortcut for me to select this without having to arrow down? If anyone knows that, let me know. And like right now I have to arrow down to select this. Can I select it? Like I was hoping because it had that capital A in there, I was hoping I could hit capital A and uh, I, yeah, I can't tab into it. Yes, that, that that's what I would love to be. I would love to be able to tab into it. That is, that's the workflow for me. I would love to be able to tab into it. I threw it out there, but you know, no big deal. These raise uh, value errors, int, uh, not a number, oh, it's complex, too complex. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so, okay, that makes perfect sense here. So not even, not even creating this. So we can get one by trying to do a print, uh, in, like trying to convert an integer to, from a string. So, you, you know, then, so this would work. So this is going to, this is something that is gonna work for us, okay? You can do this. You can print out the conversion of the string six to the, uh, to the number six right here. And so if we do Python three, and we do value error, uh, this will actually work. But what if you try to do something that is not of that? You would, might do something like this. No, that's gonna work too. Sorry, let me put some letters in there. There we go. Something that can't be converted to an integer. And we do that and we now get this value error right here. Invalid literal found for int. Thank you for that. Um, which doesn't allow us to do this. Why don't we get a value error like this in Go? If we try to do this in Go, why wouldn't we get a value error? The reason why we would not get a value error is because when you attempt to do this type of conversion in Go, it is going to give you a type error, okay? Because all the functions that you're gonna use, like this in function to be able to convert it, uh, take in a specific type of data and return a specific type of data. So rather than getting this value error, it's gonna give you a type error. It's gonna give you an incompatible type um, that's passed in most like, oh, actually, sorry, not an incompatible type. Um, it's not gonna give you an incompatible type, but it's, it should actually, maybe we are gonna get it. Let me, hold on one second. Maybe I'm tripping. Let me see this really quick. Let me see, let's, let's actually see what happens here. Um, Hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it, I'm pretty sure it gives you the same error though that we already get. 
Um, might give you a value error. Let's see. And go value error dot go. Let's see. So let's do the exact same thing here. Close this. Um, package main. What's this? Import. Bumped. Um, and let's do funk. We, we're gonna need um, to convert. So let's do this in two ways. We'll do this using. We'll we'll, we'll try to do a uh, type coercion example. We'll do a type coercion example where we don't actually uh, convert the type, where we attempt to, where we attempt to, to use it in line, like during a print statement. And then we will try it with conversion to see which one we are gonna get uh, using the string convert, uh, the string comp package, which you can use the, what's it, I ITOA or whatever package. We'll look at, we'll look it up in a second. But um, let's, I, I wanna see if there's different errors for this. Let's see. And so first we can just try to do format.println um, you do something like string and do the number six really quick, or let's actually, let's actually do it the opposite way. Let's actually do, let's actually do int the string six. Let's see if this works first. It might be full integer. Uh, value error dot go. Uh, so we do get a, we get a cannot, com so it's interesting. We get a cannot convert. That makes sense um, because it's type string. Uh, we can't convert it to an integer um, because it's, it's, you know, it's trying to do this weird little conversion here. Um, okay. It doesn't give us a specific type of error here. It is not, it is not giving us a, a value error because that's simply the name of the file. So I don't want you to be confused here for this uh, about like, oh, it's telling us it's a value error. It's just giving us a conversion error, which ultimately, again, ultimately this is a type problem, but I think we're gonna get something differently when we are doing this uh, elsewhere. Yes, you can run commands directly in Vim, but I find that to be confusing for people watching. Um, uh, yeah, I find it to be confusing with people watching. Um, it looks a little, it's, it's a little bit weird. Yeah, you can see the output, but, um, I think it's I, th I think it's a little more clear. If not, if not, let me know. I'll, I'll, I would prefer to run them exactly in Vim and not split them like this because the split functionality on the split functionality on Windows Terminal is it works well, but it doesn't work how I want it to work, and so I haven't got the workflow down yet uh, for splitting. You can split it. I think it's like like Control Shift like dub. Okay, that's I did the wrong thing there. Uh, Mess that one up. Yep, Tmux is great. I, I like Tmux a lot. I do like Tmux. I prefer I prefer Tmux. Um, I, I I like to use Tmux. You can use it here just fine. I also like to. I also like to use. Um, I can't for there's, there's a plugin that makes it easier as well. I'm trying to think. I can't remember what it's called. I haven't used it in a while. But yeah, Tmux is great. I do like Tmux. So two thoughts on the tabbing issue. One, you may need to make sure you copied all of their suggested configuration scripts into your VimRC. Okay. Uh, tab may being blocked by Windows Terminal. Okay, that's a good question. I mean, that's a good thing to look at. I will try to look into that next. I like that. Okay. Um, is it normal that Python 3 can parse a Go file? No, that is not normal at all, Lilar. Uh, not, not at all. <laughs> that that probably means, yeah, no, no it's, it's, that shouldn't work. Um... Let me get back in here. All right, so let's actually, let's pull in the string comp package. And let's pull that in and let's see if we get the same type of cannot convert uh, type-esque error that we got, that we got here. Um, yeah, let's see if we get the same thing. Let's see, let's see, what, let's see what the outcome of it is. Uh, go doc.org. I never remember which one is which for for the string conversion. There's ATOI and there's uh, ITOA or I always forget which one's which. So ATOI, what is this? Uh, this one is to do, um, this one is to do a string to an int. It looks like taking V, yep, a string to an integer is the ATOI. 
and what's the other one? Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. ITOS, wait, wait, ATOI. Nope, I don't got it. I thought I had it. If anyone knows why they're called this, um, I don't know why they're called this. ITOA, int to a, maybe that's how I remember it. Int, ITO is int to a blank and ATOI is elsewhere. You know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know why they're called this, um, but again, the goal is that you remember that you can convert things. And so when you Google it, it'll take you to one of these, or you look through the Go documentation, it'll take you to these. I, if anyone has a, a way I can remember which one's which, because I have to look it up every single time, um, <laughs> definitely let me know if there's an easy way to memorize this. Yeah, what's the A? What's the, I, I agree, I agree, but someone might know. I don't know what it is. Oh, ASCII, that's per that is, you did it second billing cycle, you did it for me. You did it. That makes perfect sense. I don't know why it took me so long to get there. Ask you to an integer. That's perfect. That makes perfect sense. All right. I like that. We, we handled it. ATOI and ITOI. Oh, that's good. You did it. This is exactly. So this, what you just did, second billing cycle right there. This, I should have I should have figured this one out. But the same way you all helped me remember forward slash versus backslash, you have just solved a lifelong challenge for me. And I appreciate you. I really do appreciate you. Very simple. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for that. What's up, Thalgrim? Good to have you, Matera, Mimar, or, Ma or, or MLMAR. Welcome, Alex, good to have you as well. What's up, uh, Frost, and Data Dave. Good to see you, Data Dave D, welcome to the channel. What's up, SS Sobus? Good to see you. I think I, I got everyone else. Yeah, there we go, that helps me a ton. That helps me a ton. Now, it, yeah, that, okay. So let's use the string conversion package. So when we were doing conversion, remember, we talked about the difference between uh, casting and, co and, and converting. So converting is when we are uh, changing the, the, the value and we are assigning it, ass we're saving it basically. We are, we are permanently changing kind of that data type there. Uh, whereas the casting is kind of inline uh, interpretation of the thing. And so you saw me use that little string function bef before and it did try, it tried to do it, but uh, you know, it. It didn't have what it needed, it couldn't do it correctly, but now we're actually gonna convert it. And so when you are converting it, uh, what you need to do is you need to save it to a value. So we'll take this. String conversion returns two things. This is good, because we're about to talk about how to use these errors in a second. Actually, this is great. We're gonna take this right here. Take Let's take exactly this and we can start to dive into a little bit what this is going to mean. But I do wanna see what kind of error we're gonna get here, uh, what error does come back from this. So let's go ahead and let's paste this in. And I don't know if that pasted correctly or not, or if it's just gross because of the set paste. That looks good to me. No, it doesn't. Let's undo that. There we go. Now it's in there a little bit better. Let's see, I, I don't, I wanna take off the, I wanna take off all the extra stuff here. I wanna actually convert it and I don't want to do any of this. I just wanna convert it real quick. And after I convert it, I wanna simply print it out right here. I wanna print out S. Uh, see, ah, well, it's gonna capture the error. Um, let me print, I might have to print, I might have to use both because I'm capturing it. Let me throw it away for now. Let me throw it away and let's see, this will work, unexpected declaration found, fumped, uh, let's see, column two, hold on, let me, this is going to work. Let me give us an error, you have to handle the error. I, well, I, can, I can throw the error away uh, like this. I should be able to throw the error away, but I, I need to handle the error so that I can see it. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's, let's, see, let's see what this gives back. Is it just, let me see what it, it doesn't do anything. If error equals nil, go ahead and print it out. Else, um, let's do error equals nil and let's do, I don't like this. Let's make it a little more explicit so that, I want you to be able to see what's going on. So I'm gonna make it a little more explicit for you, okay? We're about to we're about to learn this exact thing. So don't don't uh don't don't 
don't sweat it. We have, we haven't learned this. We're about to learn this in a few minutes, but I, I, I want to see what I more so I want to see what the what the value of this is going to be. So what they're going to do here? Whoa! This is what basically was already set up as. But I'm gonna say if, if air equals nil, then go ahead and print out everything. Uh, else, I'm going to. Uh, else, I'm going to. Where might I print the air? Great, even though it's probably going to, it's getting caught there and I'll delete this and there we go. So this, this, this code right here is gonna work. This is not gonna present us any problems. Uh, what's this value error dot go? Uh, this will work just fine. But if we change it to something that it cannot do, let's see what we get here. And so we get a, we get an invalid syntax uh, here. So we don't get, we don't get the same type of value error because it's handled in a few different ways uh, and go. Um, and so because, because of the way that this function is being taken in, this error is actually being triggered by the function which we are using. And so we're gonna learn how to do exactly this. The, the, the way that it gave you, you know, this invalid syntax, I would actually prefer for it to be a little more descriptive, but that's okay. You know, it is what it is. Everything can't be, can't give you all the answers, uh, but we're gonna learn how to do exactly this. So just, just wanna show you that the, the specific value type is not going to, it's in a, in most dynamic language, I mean, most static languages, it's not gonna give you that same, uh, the same output is usually gonna fall into one of the other categories, depending on how you have things set up and what you're actually doing. I like the fumped fumped pronunciation. So yeah, so I think it's weird. Um, I, I think it's very weird, but that is how the Go community pronounces it. That is that is how it was introduced to me by higher, high up members in the Go or the Go community, like big time players in the Go community presented this to me when I was learning Go as fumped. I thought it was super weird. I was like, why is it just, why is it not format? I don't understand why it's not format, but this is how people say it, fumped, fumped. I don't, the fumped package seems pretty weird. If you watch a lot of, uh, if you go watch a lot of go tutorials as well, a lot of people say it, I think it's pretty weird. I agree with you, um, Jenny, Ace Jenny, I agree with you. I do, I do not like, I copy this straight from them. I don't like this paradigm. Um, um, I don't like this. I could have changed it and put my, my thing in there. I don't like the if error equals nil. Um, I like to check for the existence of the error to do something. Uh, Coach Thick, this is Go. This language that we're writing right now is Go. Uh, we're doing both Go and Python tonight. Was it Kelsey Hightower? No, Kelsey Hightower is a great guy. It was not. It was uh, the guy I told you about before, Johnny Borsico. Uh, he has the Go Time podcast. He has a couple of courses all around. He does all types of talks and Go and all sorts of stuff. He was running a, he, the way I got into Go is he did a Go Bridge workshop. I'm actually planning on doing a big virtual Go Bridge workshop. Uh, I'm trying to set it up now and try to make it, I'm trying to make it a real thing, like a, like a big thing. Um, on a, it'll probably be a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, so Go Bridge is a, there's a, there's a, I don't know what the name of the main organization is, but they there's they they do it for a bunch of different languages. There's Ruby Bridge, there's Go Bridge. But what it was what it was designed to do is help underrepresented communities be able to get into these languages. And so basically, people will put on you know these these free workshops to help get people into into the language. Now that everyone's home and everyone's available to kind of dive into these things, uh, I want to run a, I want to run some big ones for everyone uh, just to kind of get people to get you all the way in on go in a, in two days now well at least get you have you touch all the things so that you can start to start off on your own journey it's really like a a big push to get people comfortable enough so that they can go uh, get into it on their own and start to work um you know at their own pace but yeah i prefer python over go yeah sin city yes nothing wrong with that you don't know enough to criticize it you you do know enough you know you know enough to say hey I think Go is verbose and it's confusing to me. So I prefer Python. I, that is, that is a, people always think you need some type of super technical answer for why one language to you is better than the other. Better is always subjective. Uh, maybe, you know, depending on, uh, people wanna say, oh, what's the best thing to do this? Oh, but what's the best language to learn? And, you know, it could be, there's no best language, it's what works best for you. Uh, you can say, what language is best to solve this problem? Well, 
when you say that it's even more nuanced it's it's okay i mean this problem you know do you want it to just be solved or do you want it do you need it to be fast do you need it to be stable do you need it to be uh maintainable what 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 is what is solved what goes into solve for you and so you know that there's there's, there's no right answers. You you do, you know enough to criticize. You know enough to say, hey, I, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of curly braces. Maybe you simply just don't like curly braces at all. That's okay. That is an okay reason to criticize it. It really is. Now someone might someone might you know argue that that's a good thing, but you know you hey I do I prefer you talked about your preference. Be honest about your preference. <laughs> Nothing not wrong with that. And I, and honestly for for a lot of things, as much as I love Go, I do think Python makes more sense in a ton of places, um, a ton of places nowadays, like for a lot of things, but um, I just, I like Go. I'm a junior working towards my bachelor in CS and I entered a heavy computer theory course that's making me second guess myself. Any advice for understanding set proofs, uh, cardinality? Uh, so huh, this is a good question. So I do not have a CS background, but I have been dipping my toe into deeper CS concepts. I don't have any advice for helping you understand those things, but my advice would be to absolutely stop second guessing yourself. These things are tough. Not a lot of people know these things. And if your goal for computer of learning computer science is to get a job coding, uh, your ability to be a pro at those things is not super important. It's more important if you are going to be doing research and if you're going to some place where you are programming in, in, in support of research, or if you're going into academia, yes, that's more helpful. Um, so don't stress about not truly understanding it, get understand it enough to pass the class. Uh, like seriously, understand, like understand enough to pass the class. If your goal is to dive deeper into academia and stuff, I don't know. I, I'm not the person to answer those things for you. Uh, I am not, that is not my forte or my expertise at all. But yeah. Um, let's see. There are better books in discrete math than standard text. You know, I, it, I don't like any of that stuff, but I, I might though. I, like I, I have been dive, like I said, I've been diving deeper as I dove, as I got away from, not got away from, but as I started to extend my skills out of the uh, infrastructure space, uh, I, it's been it's been interesting. I think that I think the software community is is so interesting. It is, it's very very interesting, and I love having conversations with people around specifically sensitivity, which you brought up again about preferences and about best practices and about. Um, you know, idiomatic way of doing things. I, I love to have these conversations because my experience in my experience, uh, I find that, that these, that a lot of these things are so arbitrary, like, yeah, that makes sense. If you, that makes sense. If you wrap it in the paradigm in which they tell you to wrap it in when they're talking about these things, but as soon as you change the paradigm, it doesn't make sense anymore, but we'll talk, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. We'll, we're going to dive into a lot of that in the, in the journeyman level course, um, about, you know, talking a little bit more about the theory, uh, talking a little bit more about why to do things certain ways and to your understanding of things. It's pretty interesting. You had to push yourself, put in the extra hours. Yeah. I, I like that. People usually shy away from telling people that, uh, telling people like, yo, you like to do the thing. You just gotta, you gotta do more. You simply got to do more. That is, I try not to, I try, I, I definitely try not to tell people that uh, often because sometimes, sometimes that's the answer. It's not always the answer. Um, you know, you can work smart to a certain extent, uh, but eventually, you know, you might run into something like you're doing now that's, that's something that scares you, something that's tough for you. And, you know, yes, still look for opportunities to work smart, but you might at this point have to just work hard and you might have to put in extra hours. You might have to get a tutor. Uh, you might have to spend the time looking at it over and over and over again and seeing it over and over and over again. And that's okay. Uh, that is okay. People, you know, you might try to learn, like let's say you're trying to understand proofs, a uh, set proofs and you are looking through it and you've seen the same one five times and you're looking over and you say, it's useless. It's useless. I'm simply not getting it. Every time you attempt to understand 
the thing that you don't understand. And this is for everybody, for whatever we're learning, for whatever you're learning at any given time. Every time you look at it, it may feel like you're not getting anything new out of it. You look at it again, you still don't understand it. You watch another video, you don't understand it. Every time you do it, it changes your brain a little bit. Uh, the, 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 the electrons, everything, the stuff in your brain rearranges itself every single time you see this thing, every time you hear this thing. And I'm telling you, eventually, you'll get it. Eventually you'll get it. And you might like part of the process of you understanding it is rearranging the, the, the way your brain works uh, that many times before you can get there. Uh, so each time you are getting closer, uh, I'm telling you, you sometimes some, th I, some things you ha that you're going to learn, you simply have to hear it 10 times, <laughs> maybe in 10 different ways before it clicks before the right paths uh, get all set up so that the electrons can fire in a way where you can understand this thing. But you know, it's okay. It, it is it's seriously completely okay. Don't, don't beat yourself up over it. Just keep looking at it. Keep trying to understand it and eventually you'll get there. All right. So now we're going to dive into, um, handling errors. So we talked about errors. Let's talk about handling errors. So we can, we can keep our programs running if we run into an error by handling that error or exception handling. So actually let's go back up to exceptions really quick. We talk about these errors. A lot of times, uh, th these errors will stop a, a program or application from running. A lot of times these errors will cause uh, the runtime of the application or the compiling of the application to stop uh, and it will cause it to break. Exceptions, on the other hand, are syntactically correct errors uh, or syntactically correct uh, pieces of software, but errors occur during execution. So everything, everything in Python, just about everything in Python, everything in Python is an exception rather than uh, purely an error. And again, it is it, it occurs during during execution time rather than beforehand. Uh, Go, it, you do have this ability. This is not something that is. We talk about finding errors in Go during compile time. Yes, it's great for that for those things. There absolutely can be errors. There can be exceptions that occur during the running of your code. Logical errors that you didn't, that, that you coded in incorrectly. So syntactically, it looks good, but in true practice, uh, this thing doesn't quite work out. And so that's what exceptions are. Um, so we talked about that. And so we're gonna talk about handling these exceptions. We're gonna talk about handling these errors. Um, so we can keep our program running. We don't have to break the program, uh, but sometimes it's good to break the program. Sometimes we wanna actively break the program and we can create scenarios for this to happen or not happen, but we can take care of this. We can add in the logic to decide what the program does when it does run into these errors. In Go, Go, and the Go paradigm differs from even other languages like Java and C++, uh, works differently. In Go, we need to be, we need to explicitly return error values, okay? Um, and handle them via conditionals. That's a little simplified for what you actually have to do but Go, errors in Go are actually a specific type. They're a specific data type. We'll look at what that uh, looks like in a second. There's, an, there's a whole errors package to help us handle these things. Um, but we need to we need to explicitly return that as a, as data, and we we can use the other tools that we have available to us again, like conditionals, to determine what happens. Conditionals, remember, are things like if statements. In Python, on the other hand, though, uh, we do this in a different way. We do this by attempting to run code, okay? We, we try to run code, and if we should receive an error, then we can tell Python what actions to take. So again, like those conditionals, um, and so there's this is the introduction of, of try-catch uh, statements, and Python is try-accept. You will hear the terminology try-catch in a lot of places because a lot of other languages do have this paradigm of trying a piece of code and catching any errors and determining what you want to do with those things. Oh, sorry, those slides, these are not the slides. Let me share the actual slides with you. Git link. Actually, I'm surprised there's so many people in here because of this. Here are the actual slides if you need them. Uh, but we can we can handle these things using the, that try accept or try catch block. So try to do the code. If there's an error, so if it works, great. Try it out. If, if, if everything goes smoothly, good. But if not, let's catch that error and let's do something with it. And again, this allows you to not break the program um, or to determine what needs to happen eventually to do these things. We're gonna talk about raising exceptions because this is specifically with uh, Python, but let's do this now. Let's hop in and let's learn how we can actually deal with these errors. And actually, hmm, it's later than I thought it was. 
I get a little water. Let's see. What's up, fast for for uh, fast fair pair? I'm gonna go with that. What's up, Sparrow Zero? Sparrow, Spar Zero, Sparrow. I like that. Welcome. What's up, Glubino? Good to have you. G O S U S. Good to have you again, Coach Thick. Thick. Welcome to the channel. It's good to have you, Den uh, Denzo. Good to see you. Some. Oh, someone. Welcome. It's good to see you all. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do the thing. Let's go ahead and implement some air handling in uh, go first. All right, so we don't need this. Actually, let's undo that. Let's save all this code. Let's again, create our new file. That's gross, clear. Let's do it. Errors, what are those? I'm so <laughs> I'm such a great programmer. I never make, oh, oh, first off, Blue Booger, please, please come over and code all of our things because no one, no, I'm the greatest error creator on the planet. I create more errors than anybody, uh, but I utilize them. I use, I, I use errors as tools to get me to the end state. You know, that's true. If you don't make any errors, you will not need error handling. That is a valid and truthful statement. And I, I believe in it. I believe in that. I, I believe in that platform. I genuinely do. Now, for everyone who sucks like me, <laughs> everyone who has fat fingers and you know is a, is you know a little bit a little bit lazy and you don't you don't want to really go through and look through your stuff, uh, you're gonna make errors. So we gotta learn this. But 100, I do subscribe to that. That is a platform I can get behind. Don't make errors and you won't need error handling. That's not wrong. It's not a wrong statement at all. The game is easy. You just have to not get hit. All these things are true. Like. They're true. Don't let no don't let anyone try to tell you. You know, everyone everyone stands on their high horse. No, you gotta, you know, you gotta make sure you have testing and all this other stuff. No, you don't. You don't have to, you don't need it. You don't need it. It's helpful to most people, but if you're someone who can, you know, be perfect, you don't need it. It's okay. You only you're using the tools. These are all tools to help you. If if I'm not making mistakes, then I don't need that tool. That's how I feel. But I know myself, and when I get to the point where I don't make any more errors, I will completely abandon error handling. All right, so let's write our first error handling piece of code right now, and let's call it error handling dot go right here. Let's open it up right now, and let's do, wow, what is that? That was weird. Um, Import. So we need, we need two different things here. So we're gonna we're gonna use the fumped package as normal. We need it, but there is also an errors uh, package that we are going to utilize and we are going to make these things work. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a new function and we'll go look at the error, pa the error uh, package that's a part of the standard library in a second, but we'll do our funk main, whoops. Our funk main and we will do so let me close that off here. What is happening? Okay. And what we'll do first is we will create a new error. So errors are a their own data type. And let's actually go look at the go docs for this, just so you can know where to look at least, and you can reference this in the future, but we can look for the errors package. And it allow again, it creates, it has a bunch of tools in it. Uh, to be able to allow you to be able to work with different errors and do some cool stuff. A lot of, a lot of different things here. You can check if something is an error. Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff you can do here. Also, you can create new errors. You can do a bunch of stuff in here. Um, but also there is go by example. And if you ever need help understanding how to work with errors, you can look for it here. But again, in the, the basic premise of errors in go is that you are supposed to whatever functions and things that you're creating, you are supposed to account for errors by one, making it a returnable piece of data, making it a returnable item. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do. And so a lot of the functions you'll see when you dive into different things inside of the Go Center library, uh, you'll have to deal with handling or, or you'll have to deal with getting back errors. And so error is something you can pass back. And then once that error it type is passed back, you need to use some your own conditionals. Uh, you need to set up your own framework for uh, working through those things. There's no, there's no extra paradigm that will do this for you. And so let's do the most basic case. At, of all of them to start, I'm just showing you where this is. If you ever need to refer 
to what to do here, but let's go ahead and write our own. So first I'm gonna create a new error just to show you that this is a different data type. So I think I can do, you know, I think I can just do, uh, make a variable called error, and then I can use that error package. So I can do errors.new. Uh, errors.new, which is a function to create a new error. It takes in a string, so I can give it an error string. And I'm gonna say this is an error. Okay. And now that I created this error string right here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to format that print line, that print F. Uh, this error so that you can see what data type it is. So we'll do printf and we will simply do a percent capital T and then we'll do a comma here and we will print out this error. There we go. So we saved that automatically formatted for me. Really nice. Let's go ahead and let's run this. So go run uh, error handling.go. And this is the type. So you haven't seen this yet. Don't sweat it yet. It is a pointer. Uh, we're not going to learn about pointers until the, until the journeyman level of the course, but really quick, a pointer is just a reference to uh, a memory address space. Um, and so it's just pointing to an errors that error string. So this is the type it's an error errors dot error string. So it is its own data type to be used to be handled. So yeah, so there we go with that. Now we got a, uh, now let's, let's work with how to handle uh these type of errors so let's 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 do let's do something real quick let's let's say we are i i don't know I, i'm trying to think of a scenario let's let's say we were creating a a piece of code that uh, validated phone numbers how about how about that let's it validates phone numbers let's uh write a function really quick um to kind of do something like that we're not gonna do full validation but i just want to I think you know, we can start to we can start to handle this. Let's say something like function uh, valid number. Actually, let's, let's call it valid phone, so we know what it is. And it's going to take in a phone number. Let's say the phone number is, um, I guess, I could make. Uh, no, I'm not going to make an integer. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it a string. I'll tell you why I'm going to make it a string in a second. I'm going to make it a string. Uh, so it takes in a string. We pass it in a phone number. It's going to validate whether or not this is a valid phone number. And what the way that we work with errors, when we create something like this, we need to uh, handle it in, in a few different ways. We need to one pass back uh, of if, if it's valid, we want to pass back a yes or no. So a Boolean true or false, we can pass back a Boolean. But the way that you also handle this is you pass back the error data type. Okay. So we pass back two things. We take in one thing. We are passing back two things. All right, and so we have to build this into our code. And so maybe one of the first things that we wanna do is uh, if we wanna see if it's a valid phone number, it's gotta be 10 digits, right? 10 digits is a valid phone number, at least here in the United States, you know, not including your country code, 10, 10 digits is the valid number. And so we can say, you know, if uh, the length of num, all right, so length of num, returns an integer and we can say if it is not equal to 10. All right. So any other number besides 10 lets us know this is not a valid phone number. I just customized a valid phone number regex a couple hours ago. That's dope. That's really cool. Actually. Um, that's actually super useful. Like validation is really cool. Um, is that the res is that return syntax, right? No, it is not right. Thank you for saying that. I would figure it out through an error An error would have told me that that was wrong. Uh, this is valid syntax right here. Thank you for bringing that up uh, for the return syntax. Um, so if length of num is not equal to 10 and uh, we, we want to do something. And so we're going to return if it is 10, this, this is a valid number. And what we can do is we can return true saying that, Hey, this is a valid number. Now I understand this isn't full validation. Just, you know, work with me here. Um, and we need to return two values. We said, that we would take in one thing and then we would return two things. We have to return something, okay? We must return something. And so what we can do is we can return an error, an errors.new. Um, and we can say this error um, number not correct length or something like that. We can, you know, make it descriptive. You, you, you wanna make it descriptive and this is one way we can do it. I'm gonna show you a couple other ways to do it. And so, Let's actually make this bigger so syntactically you can see this. Um, and so this is how we can do that. 
and we can say, cool, you know, th this will, oh, actually, no, 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 if it's not equal to 10, no, not return this error. We want to say false, not true, false. And return an error, okay? So if it is, you know, if it is valid, then we will simply return instead, we'll simply return uh, true. Yes, it is valid. And we have to return a value still for the for the error data type. So what we're gonna do is generally when this happens, you must return a value. So in this case, we wanna return the, the zero uh, value, the empty value for a an error. And we can, that that's simply nil. Nil, I believe, um, or maybe it's not, it should be nil, we're doing go. Um, should be nil. Um, and so if, if it's not 10 digits, 10 characters, we'll return, hey, not correct length, or else we'll say that this number is valid, okay? Now, let's see, let's, how do we get, how do we get this, uh, how do we use this? How do we use this function now? The way that we now need to use this function instead of what we have here is, let's say we wanna check if a number is valid, let's be a little verbose here. So let's say our phone number, And we'll set that equal to um, 443. That's the Baltimore area code. You know, I'm just off the top of my head. I'm gonna enter some random numbers. Uh, 3920090. Don't call that number. I don't know if that's a real person's number. Probably is. And, you know, just don't, don't do it. Um, so, our phone number. We wanna check if this number is valid. All right. So, you might wanna, like, you might know to do this. You say, you know, is valid. And you might originally try to do something like this. You might try to say equals, um, what's the name of our, our function? Our function is it va is valid phone. So is valid phone. Now you might try to call this function right here with our phone number, okay? So our phone number is up top. We might try to call this. All right. And so that's gonna save this value. Watch what happens when we run this code. I'm gonna remove this. Let's make it not printf. Let's make it a print line. And let's print out uh, the value of is valid, okay? Let's print this out. All right, so what are we doing here? Take a look at the code. Let's break it down. Let's understand what we're doing. We are setting up we are setting up a, a, a variable that's gonna hold the phone number we wanna check, okay? So, we have this one, 443-392-0090, okay? Then we're gonna, we're gonna set up a new variable called isValid, and we're gonna run the function that we created here, which is going to take in the phone number and return to us uh, either a true or false value, um, and it's <laughs> possibly an error. And then we're gonna try to print that out. I'm gonna show you what's gonna run here. We are gonna experience a flurry uh, likely, likely a flurry of errors when running this. And I, again, we're, we're practicing looking at errors and let's work through this problem that we are about to be faced with. Okay. Go run error handling that go. First, first, first thing is that the, um, is valid phone is, oh, I don't even know why I put that there. Undefined. That was, a, that was a big mistake. Um, I had the, the wrong name of the function. So I had a completely incorrect name. Remember, that's one of those name errors, undefined. It doesn't know what is valid phone is. That is why it's so easy to go back and see what the problem is because you're gonna say, hey, you know, I, I called the wrong function. That function did not exist. All right, and so you do this. Now we get another one here. We say assignment mismatch, one variable, uh, but two, but valid phone return two values. So notice what we're doing here. We are returning a Boolean and an error, okay? That means we must capture each of those things. And so that's where here you've gotta, you've gotta capture it uh, using two variables. So uh, we'll capture the Boolean value and the is valid, and then we need to capture the error in another variable, okay? So we'll capture that here, and we'll save it, okay? So we are now capturing two items as they come back. So now let's see if we get another thing. So now we get another problem. We get a, a whole a whole other problem here. And it says, okay, the same file on line 11. So let's look at line 11. Um, error is declared, but never used. All right, so we are collecting error here. There is a value in error. Uh, there will be a value in error, but we're never using it. 
statically typed languages, compiled languages will not allow you to be able to uh, create memory space for something that you aren't gonna use. So we need to be efficient here. So we need to use it. And so this is where the uh, some things come in. I could just print both. Um, and actually, we'll start with that. Let, 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 just so you can see it, let's go ahead and let's print both. Um, does Go work like this? Can I just do a comma error? I know Python works like this. Okay, cool. So false, number is not correct length. So we are getting back both our Boolean value and our number is not correct length, okay? So how, what is our length here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Only nine, let's add one more in here, another zero to the end right here. All right, and now if we run it, we can go ahead and get our second answer. So we get true and we get nil, that's great. But that's not very helpful because that error type's coming back and it's just being printed out. It's an error string, great, good to go. Not really, it's not really useful though. We're receiving the error, we are getting an error back in the first instance, but nothing's happening. Like, like we're not using it in any, any different, in any way. Here's how we can use that thing. Remember I said you had to use a combination of, of, of uh, capturing this error uh, which we just did by returning it out of our function. So we set up the paradigm for it to be captured and we're capturing it here in this variable. But now we have to utilize our our, um, our tools that we have available, our conditional statements to make sure this thing works. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if, okay? If I was, how do I, how do I check for an error? The way that I check for an error, the way that I check for it is that, I, you know, I'm passing back nil if there's no error. So basically I'm saying, hey, if this thing is not nil, so if it's nil, that means everything works. We did not receive an error, but if there's something there other than nil, it means we have an error. So I can say if error is not equal to nil, all right, if, if error is not nil, then let's go ahead and handle this function. All right, let, let, let's handle let's handle this error because it's there, uh, but let's handle it. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Did you work at NASA? Nope, never worked at NASA. I just like space. I like NASA. I like, you know, I like the idea, you know, I like SpaceX. I also like the poster, kind of fits. Um, yeah, so let's see, hold on. So, so in Go, you can look at the function signature to, to see if a function will explicitly return an error. Yes. Can you create custom error types and put those in the signature? Yes, but you don't have, yes you can create cust, you can, uh, using structs, but yes, you can, you can. Uh, I'll leave it at that, you can do that. Thank you, Mewtwo, I, I appreciate that. Thanks for coming through. Uh, shout out to Mewtwo, first off. Okay, thank you so much for the bits as well. That's love, I, I really do appreciate it. Shout out, Mewtwo. If you ever want to see someone doing some cool code, having a good time, doing some doing some front end stuff that I don't know how to do. I look, I, I'm trash at doing front end stuff. I'm I'm trash at building web apps. She builds web apps often. All kinds of cool stuff that we don't do over here. If you want to see her do some dope stuff, please give her a follow. Hop on over, check her out. Thank you so much, Mew. I appreciate that. I'm very excited for making a partner. I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so we're just trying to be like you, Mew. We're trying to we're trying to learn a little bit about errors right now, you know, because we make a lot of them and we learn how to handle them right now. All right, so we have this here, and we're gonna handle it. So we're gonna check if error is nil or not. And when we check, we can say, all right, if it's not nil, I can do whatever I want. I can do anything. I can, you know, it's just code at this point. I can. So let's just say, you know, maybe I just want to print. Uh, I, maybe I just want to print it out. Okay, so I can print it out. Or if I did not receive an error, maybe I wanna say like else, um, you know, format.println success, or something like that. Let's try that. Uh, let's, I have to use is valid, so I'm gonna say success. Um, just success, <laughs> whatever. Success comma, we'll do both of these things. All right, so if, if there is an error, it will simply print out the error. If there is not an error, um, it will print out success, okay? So maybe just so this is very clear that I'm using my own custom error string, I'm gonna put error right here so you see it, all right? And then so we can check this out really quick. And success, true, this is a valid phone number. All good, it, it, so what happened is it went through, it got, an, it got both the is valid back as well as the error, and it got back true and it got back nil. Um, and because there was because error was nil, it skipped this right here, but it printed this out. So let's let's break it real quick. 
And when we break it, we now receive the error right here. So actually it's gonna give us, uh, okay, question for all of you here. Why in the world did we get this back? You don't know this yet. This is, this is something we haven't gone over. It's something we touched on very lightly at the beginning. Why did we get that back? Welcome Orbital, welcome to the channel. What's up, Porter Loop? Good to have you. Miles Depot, welcome to the channel. It's good to have you here. We got this. This is actually a memory address, okay? So we got this because remember the data type for the an error was a was a pointer. Uh, it was a it was a pointer to to uh, an an errors dot error string. So it was a pointer to a memory space for this thing. Um, how can I print out this error properly? Uh, can I just string it? I might be able to just string this. Um, not one hundred percent sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, let's see. I can do it by, um, I don't remember. How, how do you print the, how do you print what's at a, I might have to do some fancy stuff to print that out. Yes, let's go. Um, so I can get that back. So it's going, it, so what it would do is it would give me this error was printed back. I can do a couple of different things here. Try error dot error. Yeah, let's try that. Um, Okay, there we go, perfect. Error.error, .error. we call the error on it. Uh, we can print that out. Yes, Burning JC, we're about to talk about log fatal. We're definitely about to talk about log fatal. Um, so the reason why it was having trouble printing that out is simply because this, again, this data type right here, this new function, this new um, method, I guess, creates a that that error data type, which is not just a string, but it is an error string. And so it's printed that memory address, we have to call the error function, thank you for that, uh, which will allow it to print this out. So we could handle, we could handle the the way that it prints out here, uh, but it's worth noting that the application right now doesn't know the application doesn't know that there was an error. Uh, right now, we created we created the paradigm in which it it knows about an error, which we can create the conditions for an error. But there's nothing wrong with this program. Uh, all like there's no type there's no there's no type error. There's no uh, value error. Everything's declared we're good to go there. We created this scenario. So as far as the program is concerned, it ran completely successfully. Either time it gets, it comes back with a zero code, a zero exit code. We talked about, I think we touched on status codes, maybe not, but the system, as far as the system is concerned, this, both of these options are correct and running pieces of code. But what if we wanted to uh, take it? What if we wanted to not do that? What if we wanted the system to understand that an error happened so that we could monitor and report these things correctly. We could use something else. There's uh, so format, uh, actually. So the reason why, actually the reason why that didn't work because I wrote print right here. I didn't even realize that. No one called me out on doing that. Uh, so it might've actually printed uh, the string if I didn't do that right there. Um, that was weird. I don't, yeah. I didn't even know you could just type print. Super odd, uh, but either way, not a big deal. What I can do is I can use, um, I can either, so Fumpt has an error uh, dash F, I think, um, an error F that I can use for formatting if I want, if I want to do that, but I can also use the log package as well. And so the log, log is what I usually do personally. Um, I like the reason why I like log is because log not only does it present you with an error, but it also uh, presents the system with a. It gives you it gives you some some stuff. It gives you timestamps for when it happened. Uh, it just, again, this is for you for logging uh, purposes, and what it'll do is it'll give you timestamps for it. It'll also give you your error messages, and it will also send the system a a failed exit code. It'll 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 exit the program. Okay, it'll exit the program where you currently are at. So it's uh, super helpful. I'll check my Go version in a second. I don't, I don't know what's installed on here. I want to say 1.13 and 1.14, um, but I'll check in a second. So if we do a log dot fatal, and we'll look at the log package in a second, and if we just simply do a log dot fatal, we can either print it out or, or this is where we can actually say, uh, you know, you broke it. Big mistake, because we want people to feel bad about themselves. Okay. So maybe we want to log that thing out. And so right now, if we run this and we go run this, look at this, we get the date 
and the time and we get that we broke it big mistake exit status one all right exit status one is a problem all right exit status zero is what you want um i never remember how do you how do you grab the exit status i think you can echo uh dollar sign uh hold on let me see bash print last exit code never remember how do i see last echo dollar sign question mark there we go so let's do that uh so the last command i ran gave me a zero status code okay zero status code is what you want but if i run this again it gives me an extra status code of one one is uh is a problem okay uh one Anything besides zero is likely, well, could could be an issue. Anything besides zero could be an issue. Zero is the exit code that, that the system knows to be, hey, everything worked completely fine. Anything other than that might be something that you need to look into. Everything's not a problem. Log.fatal one's a problem here. So exit code one is a problem. So the system now has an understanding that this thing failed and we can actually use this to, to send information out to uh, to a log so that we can look through and understand these things when we do run into an error. And this is why it's so important that you be actively verbose in this. Uh, make sure um, you understand what you're doing here. And, and, and when you are writing your functions and stuff, make sure you're thinking about this. It does, I, I will agree that it sucks having to properly handle errors. Um, it sucks having to do this stuff manually, to be honest, uh, but it's valuable, <laughs> okay? All right, that's a, you know, it is. Uh, so let me see, let me see what uh, version I'm on. I am on, uh, was it just go version? Uh, I'm on 1.15. 1, 1 you might be thinking of, oh, for latest, um, maybe we were thinking of when we did the JavaScript stuff, possibly. What's up, Memo PNG? Welcome, Vas, uh, Vasokrita. Welcome, Khan. It is good to have you all here with us. Okay, so this is this is error handling and go. Again, this is why I gave you the go by example thing to take a look at. This is the basic paradigm. This is this is all I want you to think about right now is, hey, make sure when you write in the function that you return the error, uh, that you are returning an error and you can uh, you know make sure you're either doing an error as new or nil. This is the very basic of the this is very basic. It gets much more complicated than this, but this this will work for you. This will work. Um, and that once you get it, you need to write your own logic to be able to handle the error to determine what happens. So maybe, maybe you don't want the application to break. Uh, and so you can, you know, kind of catch it here with the if statement and then maybe just pass it along or something like that. It's okay. It's definitely okay. Um, you crazy. You never thought you learned go at 3 AM. Well, congratulations. I'm glad that I'm helping you do something you never thought you would do. It's all about expanding your horizons. Okay. I'm with it. I got go version, <laughs> go to cloud slash cloud. Okay. That sounds problematic, but hey, if it's working, it's working. Amazing. All right. So that is how we do it in Go. Python is a little bit easy, uh, a little bit easier, a little bit more straightforward for what you might want to do. And now it's time to do it in Python and make sure we get this stuff uh, all set up. Um, let's see, let's add a child node. This child node is gonna be called, what are we calling this? Uh, error handling. Error handling.py. And let's open this on. What about stop? Hey, you know, like I said, we're, we're just, we're just getting, we're just getting, we're just getting our, 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 our fingers touching the stuff. We're getting an understanding of what to do with it. Um, so we feel good about it, but, um, there's, um, there's, I think, I also think go by example, will show you a couple different, uh, paradigms for handling this, uh, besides the basic paradigm, there's some cool things you can do with, uh, with your conditionals. And there's some, there's some features that exist inside of the errors package, as well as, um, uh, the way that go is set up, uh, kind of like this right here that give you a, an easy paradigm to do some if statements. So like right here is doing a quick, like capture the thing, but also capture the error. Okay. So it's checking for okay to be, uh, this or not. And it's checking that, Hey, if, if okay is not nil, basically, uh, go ahead and do a certain thing. So there's, there's some good paradigms for handling that. Uh, let's see. 
air cannot run pretty useless in my opinion that is pretty useless that is that is pretty useless all right so let's let's hop into python real quick so we can get on out of here let's do air handling in python so maybe we want to do um uh the same thing so let's um we don't even need to write a whole function or something like that this again is going to be where the uh try catch block comes in so maybe let's do a try uh we let's, let's print out we are about to try some division all right and again try catch blocks are people get excited about these this is exactly this is this is pretty important and python is try except but let's do that here so again python says rather than running into an error that's going to break things okay for us to handle them let's try to do something okay so try is the keyword for this all right try and once you have the try here this is where you can try to run some code okay and maybe we should do uh we'll, we'll change this because I'm, I'm doing this all on the fly try to do something so let's say we try to do you know five divided by five great we're gonna try something and the way it'll try to run this code it will run it will run the code right here if there's there's if this is all built in if this completes successfully if there's successful uh interpretation of this code here that's cool the code executes it worked so we will use that code the way that you capture an error is with an accept block okay so you, you try this if it works great that's what it is but if it doesn't we set up the exception here and you can do whatever you want so i'm first going to introduce you to this so you can do whatever you want and i'll simply print nah bruh this failed okay okay so maybe we want something like that and we'll save that and we will now run it uh air handling okay and it says we're about to try some division actually let me uh let me put some stuff in here so that it works better uh so it's easier to read and makes a little bit more sense even though we're doing ridiculous things and i'll put i'll i'll, uh, I'll put result whoops let's do it again Let's set it to a value and we will simply say printf, uh, whoops, print f, uh, this worked. And the answer, answer, come on, is result. Yeah, let's do that. Close it up here. All right, so now we'll know which one, now we'll know which one happened, okay? We'll run this again. And we run it and it says, we're about to test some, try some division. This worked, the answer is one. This thing worked, okay? It worked. But what if we try to do, again, something like we did before. Uh, let's say our code, you know, we, we're not sure if it's going to uh, operate properly. Maybe we are uh, working with a bunch of different things. And we try to do this here and we try to do it with a string and we run it again and we get a failure. So it tried to do something, it tried to do its best. And when it failed, instead of the application raising what's called an exception, instead of it raising this exception, like it did before, it gave us, it, it gave us this, this way of managing it. It says, nah, bro, this failed. So if I do, if I do another, um, you know, if I do the echo dollar sign question mark, we get a zero exit code. This is valid code, but let's look back at it again. And let's say we try to run just this. Let's yank it. Let's paste this here. And let's uh, comment all of this out real quick. Oh, oh, I forgot. I'm not using VS code. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me use my, uh, let me take my, my Vim skills back. Um, 
All right, all right, all right, hold on. Uh, shift V, no, 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 no. Control V, undo, undo, hold on, hold on. Undo, I'm gonna figure this out, hold on. It's gonna be Control V. Why is it doing that? That's not what I want. Hold on, escape, escape. I'm trying to remember how to, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to remember how to block comment in Vim. Don't tell me, give me, give me at least one more try. Just, just V? No, 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 that's not what I want, that's not what I want. Uh, No, it's not shift V, it's control, it's control V. But why is it doing this? I don't think that's it. I don't think that's what I want. I Hold on, save it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It can't be shift, I already did that. Alt, no. No, I don't wanna paste, I don't wanna paste. What I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to uh, get into visual mode and I'm only trying to get into visual mode for the first line, okay? After I get into visual mode for the first line, I need to go to all the lines that I need to insert on. I need to shift I it, I need to like put in my thing and then hit escape, okay? I don't really, uh, I don't know, I don't really. So div divide by error is gonna give us, we can divide by error, it's completely fine, uh, but you will get, you will get, a, you will get a specific divide by zero, me zero message. Um, all right, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna comment these out because I don't remember my Vim foo. Man, I was getting good at Vim and then I stopped. All right, so in this example, I just wanna show you, I just wanna show you that what happens if you don't catch the error, okay? So when we run this now, we do get an actual error, okay? And we get a one exit code. Okay, so this is a this is a failure as far as it's concerned. So doing the same exact thing with the try catch block allows us again to be able to handle this error. It allows us to receive an error back, but not exit the program and decide what we want to do next. So we'll delete this line here. Darn it! I really wanted to. Man, I feel like I feel like I was right though. I feel like it's just messing with me. Is it, oh well, hit control, yeah, so yes, that's what I'm, I'm hitting control V. I'm hitting control V and when I did hit control V, it's pasting, it's pasting. I don't know why it's pasting like that. Be, oh, it's Windows, it's Windows messing it up. It's cause it's Windows and it's remote. I get it. that's that's why. So I, I think I was doing it right. Control V, press my J's down to get all my lines, shift I, put in the character, hit escape. That's what I know, that's what I learned, that's what I know, but you know, it, uh. It's not working for me the way it's set up right now, unfortunately. Uh, but so running it like this does in fact catch this error and allows us to be able to do some things with it. Now, this is the most basic of what happens. Sometimes you actually want to, uh, actually let's, um, let me show you some things real quick. This, th this functionality, this try except block works it has a lot of functionality in Python. Let's run through it real fast, but uh, I wanna show you the divide by zero error. If you try to do this, you will get this zero division error. It is a specific error type in Python. Remember I told you different languages have different uh, different error types. So divide by zero is something that we can get here. Whereas if you do this, something like this, it's, it, it gives you a type error, okay? So what I can do, um, you can add some logic to this try except. Uh, this is a this try except block is very similar to a case or an if else block, and we can catch, we can determine that we want to we want to do things based on what we receive back. Okay, so let's say that I want to um, let's say I only like I I only want to check for um, this type error right here. Let's say I only want to uh, give this back for a type error. I can say hey except only on a type error and print, you know, see inside this, uh, you got a type error. But right now this except wouldn't handle anything else. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be set up to handle any other type. So if I get a zero value, it would not accept this. Um, so let's run it real quick. Make sure we're good. Let's run it really quick. And it's, it, it responds back with, I have a type error which we expected because this is a type error. But if I send it back with this, if I do the zero, divide by zero, that is a different type of error, okay? And when we do this, we actually get a failure in the application. We are no longer properly handling 
this thing. We get a zero division error. And so we can see now that our exit code is one, it's a problem. We, we, we did not handle this error. Even though you might say, again, you're saying, hey, I thought we did handle it. No, we handled only the type error. So you can put together these expect uh, these expect blocks for everything. You can explicitly accept, you know, different types. So if I want to accept on type error, if I want to say you have a type error, I can do that. But I can also do uh, a, a little catch or an L I can do an else block uh, for this as well. And I can say print, this is any other error besides type. Okay, maybe I wanna say something like that to be able to handle all of this because I wanna add in some functionality here to allow us to do different things. And look at that, it is handling this now, okay? There is an else as well. So there is an else. You can also do what we did in Go with the log.fatal. You can also raise an exception. You can also raise a type error or something like that. So you can you can also do, you know, maybe I want to just accept and I just want to accept it like this. And maybe I want to raise. There's a raise keyword. Uh the raise keyword, um, I, we should look up the exact functionality of it, but I'm pretty sure the raise keyword is gonna allow us to actually uh, put forth an error um, and actually create an error. And I think you can create which error it is. I think I can, you know, I think I can do an, a type error like this and it'll work. What's up, Fro Buttons? How you doing? Blue Streaker, welcome. Thack, welcome. Uh, Core Weight, good to have you. Killer Cam, welcome. Uh, I am assuming this is Japanese kanji or another language that I don't know how to pronounce. It's good to see you here. Um, I, if you if you want to tell me what to call you, I will call you that. What's up, big uh, big world, small world? Good to have you. Welcome to the channel. Uh, yes, definitely missing the last R here. And you can raise um, a type error here, and now this no longer makes any sense. But. If I try to run it like this, I get this uh, zero division error, but I also am raising this thing. So I get one uh, error that comes out of it, and then I get this error that I did raise th that says this is another error besides type. So I can use the raise keyword to actually cause the application to have an error, which again, you might want to do sometimes. And if we run our echo command again, then we do get a, a, a one exit code because this is pretty important. Uh, being able to to know what to do for these things is very important. So again, except you can also just do things like, um, I think pass is a keyword here too. I think you can simply pass and say, we would another print statement to say maybe we ran into an error, but we kept going. And so right now, if, if it is, so this will print out no matter what, but if, um, you know, if it runs into, if it doesn't run into an error, this would print out this, that this worked and it's still gonna print out this line regardless. But this is just to show you that you can get past the accept. You can, you can catch it all and keep going in your application. I actually don't know if pass works here, but we're gonna find out if it works here. And it does, it, it the pass works just fine right here and it allows us to move on without doing anything. So be careful, <laughs> be careful with these uh, try accepts. Some people use them to make their application work no matter what, all right? This is not what you don't wanna get into the habit of doing this. You really don't wanna get into the habit of doing this. Right now we only have a little bit of code in here. You might put, you will put your whole application in a try accept. You can put the whole thing in there. That is not what you wanna do. You, you want to know when there are problems. So just be wary of using try except too much or using them uh, using them too loosely, kind of how we're doing now. Make sure you set up the cases. Again, you can do a try and you can do an accept for specific data types or, or specific types of errors. You can also, there's also an else that kind of works as a last accept as well. Um, that'll just run something that you need it to run. Um, and we go back over here, you can see, uh, this also finally, this allows you to do it regardless of uh, the results, which is nice. So finally will always run. I forgot about finally, uh, no matter what. So this is kind of a, 
Uh, it's like a super else, like it's gonna run no matter what. So at the end of your try except, you can run a finally, which will just execute code no matter what. Super nice. Um, and by the way, you can return values to indicate an error, but it's generally found upon, yeah. Yep. And so again, this is just a little example here in W3 schools of what all of those things look like. And this is kind of what we did here. You can specify the type that you wanna um, do a specific thing for. And I encourage you, I really do encourage you to handle errors in this way early on to, uh, you know, think about think about who's gonna be debugging this application later in the future. You know, help yourself out a little bit and, um, you know, be, be helpful in your error messaging or handling of your errors. Uh, so even if you want your application to go on, maybe you do want it to spit out some information to let people know, hey, we ran into an issue with this data um, and you know we kept going, we're still good, but we did run into an issue that can be pretty helpful. Um, and yeah, so like the final is always gonna run this no matter what, which is nice that it, it will always run the final line once. So that's cool. And we talked about the raise keyword to actually raise an exception. So you can just raise an exception like this if you'd like, or tell it the type. So I told it exactly what type of exception to, to run through, uh, or like we did here, run a spe uh, raise a specific type error, okay? Can you uh, uh, print the entire error event? What do you mean by the entire error event? Let's see, hold on. I like to learn how to program at the same time. First time here, finally, yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see it use a lot. Except print the, uh, print, like print the entire error. Um, so, e, so let me see here. Let me look at it. Um, oh, like, like what comes back? Um, yeah, I think you, yeah. I think you can, um, but I don't actually, I actually don't know the right way to do it. Let's try, I mean, I don't I actually don't know how to do that um, in Python because I don't handle it. I don't, <laughs> this is bad to say, but usually I'm, I usually only utilize Python to, for, for scripting now. And when I do handle errors, I handle them very generically. As of, as far, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. If there's an easy, if anyone knows of a way to do it, let me know. Um, I don't know of an easy way to print out that error event to save it as something. I don't know what it would come through as. Uh, I don't know what paradigm they have in here to let you keep it. Uh, let's see. Let's let's Google it really quick. Python try uh, catch print error. There we go. Pretty simple. Also, it does it does have an error object as a variable named error? Okay. Formatting and printing the, the, the traceback is a different story. Yeah, so Python, I don't love Python tracebacks at all. I really don't like Python tracebacks. Uh, White Wolf, that's, those are not the slides. Let me give you the slides. Um, There we go. Those are the slides right there. Have you started the projects at the, let me see where this, uh, see thread. Okay. All right. So cool. So you can you can grab it exceptions. Right. Oops. It looks like you can use the error um, in the object. Oh, expose this error. Oh, okay. All right. So you can assign it to a you can assign it to a variable. That's helpful to know. Uh, yeah, but the the. I, I don't particularly like Python stack traces, but I do like I do like Python stack traces. Uh, so both Python and JavaScript stack traces can be problematic. Pythons are always interesting because it gives you a bunch of relatively unnecessary information at first, at least in my opinion, and it gives you all the stuff at the bottom. So I find that people who are new to Python will spend a lot of time at the top of the stack trace when all the information that you need is actually at the bottom of the stack trace. But yeah, it's super it's super interesting. What's up, 3D House of Beef? Good to see you. What's up, Seven Unifish? I guess maybe that's Lunafish. I'll go with that. What's up, Fro Buttons? Um, so that's it. <laughs> uh, that, that's it. I mean, the, the, again, the goal is not to make you a pro at at handling errors. It, 
it is something that will come with practice. There are a number of exorcism problems that make you raise an exception or that expect you to handle an error properly and understanding how that happens is all we really wanted, wanted to do. Um, and you, you know, you can dive into this a lot more. W3 schools has good information on that. Uh, go by example works well. You can also look at the errors, uh, documentation in the go standard library. All right. That is, uh, that, the, that's what we learned tonight. So we, tonight, what do we learn? What are the tangible takeaways that your application can run into errors, errors that can cause, uh, the application to break the way that we can handle those. So one, what kind of, what kind of errors can you run into that will cause your application to break one syntax errors, errors that, uh, where you're, you're not following the rules of the language. Things are structurally incorrect. You are not following the rules, things like missing semicolons, things like missing brackets and braces. That's what you should be checking for. Uh, incorrect indentations, things like that are what you should be looking for, for syntax errors. We also learned about things like type errors. When you have mismatched types, um, and, and types that can't work well together in different languages that, so you should be looking at making sure that you're not attempting to do some type of operation, uh, with types that are incompatible. So type errors is another thing that can completely break your code. We learned about value errors or undefined errors where you are trying to reference something that does not exist. Um, it doesn't exist as, as far as the program is concerned. And this generally leads you into two different directions. It leads you to, uh, is the thing actually declared? Is this variable? Is this function? Uh, is it a thing? Is it, is it, is it real? It should it be there. Um, and the other thing is scope. Is it within scope? All right, it's here. I see that I'm declaring this variable, but or I see that I'm declaring this function. Is it in the scope of where I'm accessing it? So those are two things you should be thinking of for that. We also dove into some value error things. Um, for specifically Python that will allow, you know, if you try to, uh, perform an operation again, kind of like we have type errors, uh, for other things where you cannot uh, do this operation because of the, the type of something, the value is off. You can have errors like that. Each of these languages has a few of their own little specific errors that you can run into, um, that we saw, but when you're diving into a language, you should uh, take some time and go look through those things. We also learned that you can handle these functions so that your application either doesn't end, doesn't break uh, completely should it run into any errors, uh, or you can handle these errors in a way that you can provide feedback or, or make the application do what you want upon failure. Uh, that can be more helpful to you. And we learned about error handling and we learned in Go. You do it in one way where you have to be explicit about returning, uh, you know, its own data type and you have to be explicit about returning that information and actively uh, manually managing that data and by determining, you know, if you did get an error type, what to do with it. And you can, again, you can log stuff out. You can actually deliver error codes if you like with any information that you want, but you have to go through manually and handle that. Uh, and in Python, we learned that you can try, you can do try catch blocks where you can attempt to, to run the code and should it work, then the code just runs. Should it not work, then you catch or you, uh, you catch the exception and you can determine what you want to do with that exception. And that's all you need to know. That's really all you need to know. I know there's a lot, um, there all you need to know you will, you'll dive in, we'll dive into this even further. Um, especially the reason why we're learning this now is because we're about to dive deeper into algorithms. Okay. We're about to dive deeper into uh, getting comfortable with algorithms. This isn't, you know, you're not going to be getting into your full algorithmic course, but, uh, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper on Thursday, learning how we approach these things. And we're going to learn how to be a little more, we're going to learn how to make the things that we're doing more robust. So I'm going to give you some problems that exist outside of exorcism or code wars, where we have a little more rules where we got to handle, uh, we got to handle some stuff and air, air handling is going to be super important. So we're going to start to use all the things that we've learned so far, you know, all of your variables, all of your, uh, arithmetic operators, all of your conditional statements, uh, functions, scope, all the things that we've touched so far, air handling, we are going, we're going to, we're just putting those tools together. Okay. I'm actually not even sure that you're going to learn any more tools. Um, I think that might be every tool that we're going to learn. And let me confirm that. Uh, let's see, well, let's see what else we got on the docket for this. Uh, that might be all the, all the basic tools for the rest of this course, to be honest, um, that we're going to go through, or maybe I'm tripping. I don't know tonight. Fun, uh, tonight was air handling. Oh, well, no, you learn OOP. Never mind. That's uh, yeah. We'll learn OOP. This will be pretty much purely Python next week. So 
you know, that's diving right back into Python um, almost purely uh, because Python's object oriented, but Go is not, even though Go has some object oriented properties. Uh, so we will touch both, but this will be a main Python week. And so we're gonna learn how to do some algorithms and problem solving this week. And then we'll also dive into it the last week of this course. And then we'll dive into the harder stuff. You know, we're just gonna keep building upon it over and over as we get deeper and deeper. What's up, G Yog? It's good to see you. Could do anything. That's dope. You can do anything. Wow, protein. Welcome to the channel. You're coming in at the end, but I appreciate you coming through. I appreciate you giving me the follow. Hope everyone got something out of tonight. Algos all in go, probably. Um, well, probably a little bit of both. Oh, uh, probably a little bit of both. We won't do the same algo in the same in, in each language, but they'll mainly be in Go, and we'll do some in Python as well. Yeah, so dope, 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 dope. That's it. So, who's online this evening? I man, I am, I am ready for some dinner. Gonna be so good. Oh, cool. Learn with Leon. We catch Learn with Leon when we can. We're gonna head over to Learn with Leon, who's likely getting offline right now. But when you get over there, Leon made partners just like us very recently. So we're gonna get over there and we're going to wish Leon, uh, you know, a, a happy partnership, a, a, a congratulations on the partnership. We'll go over and say hello. If you wanna learn anything about web development, uh, Learn with Leon does a lot of what, like the only other person I find on Twitch so far that's doing uh, the same thing that we're doing or similar things. And he's going through and he's doing web development boot camps. So if you're interested, head over and, uh, and say hello, follow him and you know, check, check it on out. Absolutely burning JC, it was good to be here with you all tonight. Again, I gotta go eat some food, but let's go over and say hello to learn with Leon. Absolutely portal loop, um, portal poop. I don't know why I said portal loop, but portal poop. I got it right this time and now I won't forget it. Amazing, I love it. I love, you know, I love it. We got booties and poop and all that stuff. It's amazing, my favorite. Head over, 9876, uh, 543, 21, everyone have a great night. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're back, we're back again with a, uh, a Terraform project, a Terraform uh, scenario if you wanna come through tomorrow and learn a little bit more about Terraform. So see you all later, peace out.